Okay, so I've got an idea how we can make, like, more podcasts more quickly in future. Which uh -huh. is, what if we just take a leaf out of the gaming industry's book and start remastering previous podcasts episodes? All we need yes. to do is, like, add in a couple of extra paragraphs at the beginning so people notice it. Then we just, like, take out any bits that haven't aged very well, add an additional jiggle and hair physics, and that's it. We've got a brand new episode we can sell for 50 quid. Like, 70 if we're feeling ballsy. I'm into it. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, how, how long is the back catalogue of Polkats episode? Like, where did we fucking start this thing? This is the Almost a decade ago, episode. actually. No, that's the episode of... Is this series three, technically? No, yeah, like, well, I, I'm saying it's two. I've been saying Because I two. swear at one point we, we kind of did, like, what was flagged as, like, the second series after a gap. It was one episode. I'm counting it as, like, an epilogue for the first series. <laughs> in, 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 like, so this is, this is kind of series three. Like, But series one goes back to, like, 2016 or something. Like, we could just go back, take a couple of them, remake them. Nobody would notice. No, they definitely would. Some people like, would there's, notice. There, no, there's, there's some people who listen to them all the time and they would definitely notice. There 100%. would be a lot of political references that wouldn't age very well. Whoa, yeah, Trump's I don't know if he's talking about David Cameron. Like, but then, <laughs> we, yeah, but that's the thing. We don't have to, like, pretend it's a new episode. We can just say it's the podcast remastered, and then we're being authentic if it's completely out of yeah, date. But, but, yeah, we but, can advertise it. It's got the original voice actors in it. Yeah, original voice that's actors. Class. Good, 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 good. We, could, yeah. we just give, yeah, Matt extra jiggle physics. There'll be five minutes of deleted scenes. Yeah. It'll just be like... That's fucking on setting up audio. That's true. We could just ink behind the scenes extras. People yep. love behind the scenes extras. Yep. <gasps> then we could just like you record know, could... two separate outros that you can then like, you know, vote between. So you've got a choice. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. But that's the problem. We're going to do that. Alternative unused be... endings. But the videos are going to be like, no, I'm glad Donald Trump's not going to get elected. Oh, Brexit. <laughs> God, who's going to vote for that? That's definitely not going to happen. Hey, vote for it. <laughs> Look, it's an important historical not, record, okay? At least Trump's not getting elected a second time. Okay, okay, I, I want you to know this. Uh, you know that I do I do a little, uh, like, just single person, like, little podcast for my Patreon community members and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That I have on record, February 2020, one person asked me in that thing, was I worried about this COVID thing they'd heard about? And I yeah. said, don't worry, it's not going to be a big deal. It's just going to blow over. You hear about these things sometimes, like bird flu and whatever. Like you hear about them and then they just go away. Give it two months, we'll never hear about COVID <laughs> again. Um, that's, that's just, I've just uh, got that on record. Predicting I, COVID wasn't going to be a big deal in February 2020. That's that's just the thing I've said that's never going away. <laughs> I, I was the opposite. I was convincing Matt that we, this was actually legitimately going to be a serious one and that this is going to change a lot of shit. And I remember doing this on a dog walk. And Matt was like, no, no I, I really just think you just take. No, we, I just we were think on a dog just walk. Put, put a little collar around Matt and just take him out for yeah. walkies. <laughs> no, we were on a dog walk and, and Danny was like, oh, they're going to have to do a lockdown. I'm like, that's a bit extreme. I doubt they're going to do, do that. And then he's like, no, it's a proper serious thing. And I'm like, no, it's like going to be like bird food. It's going to blow over. Like, I was the same as you. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. didn't say it. You didn't say it like uh, on uh, being recorded to <laughs> well, be quoted at you forever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I have now. I've said a lot of stupid things on, on, on record, admittedly. So That's I, true. I can't same. really. That's really true. Same. I wanted to, I, every now and then I go back to old videos and I kind of go, we should take this one down. Uh, we should get rid of this one. Uh, Actually, this that one reminds down. me. Do you remember in the podcast while. before the Switch came out? I remember me and you, Dan, were both convinced the Switch was absolutely going to be a disaster. Oh, Looked yeah. like yeah. shit. So I think I think we that. specifically said it was. It may well be Nintendo's last console. They were going to go like Sega and become a third party developer because the Switch yeah. looked like shit and it was going to be a failure like the Wii U. Yeah, yeah, we definitely said that. That could be found in one of the earlier episodes of the podcast. So what the fuck do we know? Clear. Yeah, I right, mean, cause, well, it, the thing is, I was coming off of, you know, Nintendo, I, I was a Nintendo fan, and then the Wii was like, this isn't for you, and I'm like, fair enough, and then the Wii was like, this is for you, I'm like, it's shit, what, what's happening? So, like, Nintendo was like nothing for a long time. Mm. Like, there was just a big, like, for me, just this big gap of like, well, we're trying, but... Uh, and then so the Switch, I'm like, uh, I don't know. You didn't even know how to advertise that the Wii U was a new console. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's a third best-selling console of all time. Currently, yeah, the thing is, you've got to respect the, the Nintendo pendulum. This is how it goes. They always follow a success. 
by a failure of a comparable or greater size and then swing back to a success of a comparable or greater size, which makes me terrified for the Switch U. The oh, Switch, Switch U is going to sell minus, like, console somehow. <laughs> you no, know, admittedly, admittedly, PlayStation did, are releasing a PlayStation U. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, uh, the fucking ha the handheld thing that they're yeah. being like, big is very literally just a Wii U controller. It works the exact same way. It does the exact same thing. Admittedly, when controller. I first saw it, I, I thought it was a dumb Photoshop joke. <laughs> right, genuinely. I thought it was actually Ridiculous. a Photoshop joke. We're, we're I didn't realise it was real. Three. I've just realised this is a mid E3 podcast. Well, there's not E3. We're sort of, yeah. Well, because there's E3. Summer Games Fest tomorrow. We've got Bethesda Xbox on Sunday. Yeah, we're, we're, we're clearly inside the territory that would be E3 if E3 didn't just, like, keep being dead. Well, PlayStation did one. They did a few weeks ago, a week ago. They did their reveal of Spider-Man. I mean, Christ, we watched... Fucking Daniel watched an Apple co fucking keynote yesterday. I did. The day before. I right, seriously, why, why, the, why the fuck are we recording this today? Let's be clear. It's, it's currently... It's Wednesday the 7th. This isn't going to yeah. go out for, like, you know, till next week. Uh, so we're well, going to be, we'll like, saying, oh, I wonder what's going to be in, like, you know, in Microsoft and Starfield uh, Direct. You know, By the time this comes I, out, I, everyone's going to already know. Yeah, I think we should put this out as soon as possible. It's late <laughs> enough. <laughs> Because uh, otherwise seen... we're just going to be... Why do we record this this week? We should have done it next a, week. Fuck's sake. I've seen a little bit of leaked footage of Starfield. Mm. And I'm quite I've excited. not seen it. I don't, I don't want to know. I'm excited. Mm. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Because I've heard Star mixed Star things. The game, like the big AAA game I've got, I'm most excited for this year. Yeah. I'm really is... hoping it's good. Because I'm going to be honest, like that first sort of gameplay trailer, was that last mm. year at this point? Yeah. Like, I wasn't overwhelmed. Like, it just kind of felt like, you know what? Pretty standard, sneaky things. Enemies have got their health bars. It felt it felt a bit bland. It's like, if that's the, you know, that's the bit you want us to see, what's the stuff you didn't want us to see? Because well, everyone to see should be the incredible stuff. And it wasn't hugely impressive to me. So, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm scared. I really hope it's good. I desperately want it to be good. That's just the bit that's finished. Yeah. Uh, and everything else is just a bit of a... Well, that's the thing I keep mess. hearing. That's going to be a, like a big, like cyberpunk style release. Well, that was just when its release date mess. was a year and a half ago. Like, yeah. No, but I'm still hearing that even now. It's going to be interesting. Loads of people are saying that it's like, oh my god, it needs like another year or two, even now. Hmm. I mean, we'll see. Maybe they'll delay it. Yeah. I feel like they've delayed oh, it enough. I'm not sure they can anymore because now they need to turn the like marketing focus onto Elder Scrolls Six. Which has got to be doing something because that's been years since they announced that, that was in production. Yeah, but so they they announced that to mitigate the fallout of Fallout seventy six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the year after where they were like, "That was their we're sorry conference." Where they were like, "We're sorry, look, here's here's the Elder Scrolls six. It's a logo and is just." Footage. I mean, they they've got no, to want to move their background. marketing machine onto hyping up something that's not Starfield at this point. They've got to want to start talking in a bit more detail about Elder Scrolls 6, so they can also start teasing at Fallout 5, so that next year they can start being like, and now Elder Scrolls 6 is coming out, probably 2025 in fall, and also here's the first teaser for Fallout 5, which maybe will be like 2027 or something. Right, did you just say that you think Elder Scrolls is going to be 2025? Yeah, I do. I'm going to say 2027. <laughs> Oh, John. 27, maybe what? 26. Why, why is that so ridiculous? It's been so long since Skyrim came out. Skyrim yeah, was 2011. If, yeah. it's 20, if it's 2025, that's 14 years between main Elder Scrolls games. That's not ridiculous. They've had 14 years. No, I agree with you, John, but at the same the time, they clearly game. haven't started working on it properly yet. No, Even no. now, they, no, I'd they, no, they absolutely going... have. That's ridiculous. They, we know no, for a I'd fact. Say we know for a fact. The day yet. after they wrapped on Fallout 3's last bit of DLC, some people got to work designing Fallout 4. Even if they haven't yeah. said it out loud, they have been working on Elder Scrolls 6 for a long time. Yeah, but it's still pre-production. They'll definitely the thing is... be in a state of kind of working out lore and engine stuff. That we do in the technical side of things. That we do in the just these just. Concept art at the ass. But it's Bethesda are really absolutely early stages. It's taking. They're doing shape. a Rockstar because Rockstar obviously they were releasing a game every year and then the, the, they just got longer and longer and longer and longer and it just you know the gaps became yeah a decade, that's you different know. because they didn't need to hurry it on because they started making more money than God by just doing the online the online bits. 
Yeah, but going to take a long time. Is this is this what we're learning in this one? Is John doesn't know how long it takes to make a video game? No, they're work, did, they're working on it behind the say, scenes, and we just don't know about it yet. Wait, 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 did, look, Bethesda, you say this is what Bethesda do. Out, like, they release, they announce a game, they kind of finally let you know that a game's there, and then say actually it's coming out later this year, which is exactly what they did with Fallout Four. We didn't yeah, know so anything about instance. Fallout 4. Then yeah, they then announced it, it during later. that summer and said, uh, it's coming out this autumn. And we went from nothing to, uh, it's coming out in a few months. Yeah, and that's they've not done that again. And they're going to do that in 2025. <laughs> didn't you say that Starfield was coming out in March? Yeah, he did. Okay, it yeah, did. didn't. Yeah, but because it that's... clearly wasn't going to, because it was like John, we two established... months they had to start John, with all due respect, thing, yeah. we established like 10 minutes ago that you keep getting predictions aggressively wrong. <laughs> so then if, like, you're wrong with COVID, you're wrong Admittedly, with Donald Trump, yes, you're this, wrong this with Brexit. This was a bad podcast like... for me to start making predictions after we oh! began with me making bad predictions. On the predictions front, something I completely forgot to mention in the last, maybe the last two episodes. The, you know when we asked the AI to do lottery numbers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It won! Oh no, it didn't. No, it, it didn't. won. It won. It right? I've got. I I bought a lottery ticket. Yeah. And I put the put the thingy on, and it got two numbers right, and it got another draw, and that it happened twice. Wait, you I get a free ticket for two numbers in the lottery? Yes. How long has that it been goes a thing? Goes to another one. I don't know. That's what it said. That didn't but used so, to be. You, 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 the, you, when you last draw first came out, it was yeah, three numbers for a tenner, and that was the low. That was yeah. the lowest you got anything. But now two, you get another. You get another go at it because I think they've upped the amount of numbers from like fifty to sixty. Oh, that's so, that's sort 50. of that sort of evil retention that my marketing brain respects, but I also know is evil. <laughs> yeah. But no, so like out of the three, because we bought, I bought three tickets with it. I think I got three numbers out of it. Two of them got two numbers. So it does know the winning lottery numbers. It, it you just demonstrated it doesn't. It knew t- it knew four winning lottery numbers out of like fifty. What's the chance? Christ, of that? that's so evil that to keep people playing the lottery, they give you another go relatively easily to keep you hooked. Jesus. Yeah, but I kind of just I just let it ride, that's and I was so like, so evil. Oh, one or last or whatever. That's Didn't actually check so if those lovely ones won. insidiously evil. Oh. <laughs> Damn boy, like, who knew brain. it was bad? <laughs> Your marketing who knew? is evil. Anyway, look, you were, yeah, so you look, thought Starfield's yeah, what, coming that's out That's what's going to happen. Okay, Starfield's coming out. Next year is going to be, hey, here's some Starfield DLC. And also, here's the first proper, like, first glancy trailer uh, to Elder Scrolls Six Hammerfall or whatever. And then it's going to come out in fall 2015. If we get the proper gameplay trailer in not E3 20, uh, 2025. And then they'll also start teasing Fallout 5. And then the same pattern will repeat for the next, for the two years after that. All right, here's my Fallout pitch. 5 2027. Locking it in now so that when we do the podcasts, you know, with, with our little Zimmer frames in 2027, <laughs> we just be like, oh, John, you got that wrong, didn't you? Curse so, you, Dan. If only Matt hadn't died, we'd be so sad. He's <laughs> not even as good as stolen. If only Matt hadn't been murdered. In, in uh, this year, Starfield will probably come out. Yeah. Unless it gets like a last minute delay, but I, that's the thing. And then we'll have, you know, half the team goes into more getting Elder Scrolls started, and so, most people will be also doing the, the DLC for um, Starfield, which will be about a year, a year and a half's worth. Yeah, fair. Uh, they will next E three. They'll be revealing. So this is this E three. Yeah. Next E three, they'll probably start revealing that DLC. Just to be clear, though, in Bethesda, they very often the the main A team that made the game are very often aren't leading on the DLC. They often let the DLC go to slightly more junior people to let them have a shot so the A-team can move straight on to other things. Like, this happened in Fallout 4. Like, some relatively, some more junior people worked in fairly high-up positions producing some of that DLC, which is kind of a fun system because it does let some other people, like, you know, have a go and let, you know, the next generation get some experience, which is kind of cool. So there is going to be... Next E3 will be, look at the DLC for Starfield. Mm-hmm. The E3 after... Oh, and here's what, you know, Arcane's been up to. Oh, it's Redfall 2. Um, I, I imagine then... that, that we're not going to hear of Redfall again. I think they're going to... Quite... Have you played Redfall? No, I'm smart. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can I just say, right, one of my favourite things about Redfall, I think I mentioned it last time, but in Liverpool there was just this big poster yeah. outside the train station that they had... That I found out, because I, I kept walking past it, and it was just this massive... It was on the side of a building. It was like seven stories high. Yeah. 
And it was just the word Redfall and a picture of a vampire with no other context. Yeah. None. I'm just... And then I found out what made it worse is it wasn't just a poster. No, no, it was a mural. It had been hand fucking painted wow. by lots of fucking expensive people and put in the most prominent fucking position in Liverpool to advertise it. And they didn't say it was a video game or where to get it. It was just the word Redfall. I'm guessing they're working with... something these days. People just Google things they don't know. I don't. <laughs> Look, the, the implication I get from Microsoft uh, is just that they, they everyone's kind of flying around and no one really knows what they're doing, which is classic Microsoft, really. I'm so um, confused by Redfall. I don't know what the fuck happened there. Because, like, very often when we say, uh, oh, this I is a bad video game. I know what happened there. Yeah. Somebody went, hey, make a life service game, okay? And they went, we don't make those. They're like, <laughs> make a life service game. I do think, yeah, Redfall. honestly, I, I was about to say, I think the, the most logical explanation is... Arcane were told to make a game they didn't want to make and they just rushed it out and gave it to the C team and then said, fuck it, ship it so we can get back There's to producing another element. thing we want to make. There's another element I found out about sort of internally in sort of how Microsoft work is that when they agree on a release date for any sort of like Game Pass or Microsoft-based games, because of how bureaucratic their entire systems are, they can't just change the release date without, like they just don't. Like, they said it and that's it. It doesn't matter if it's not Hang ready. On, Redfall was out. delayed. Redfall was originally going to come out not at the date it was. It was originally going to come out like six months earlier or something. Redfall was like definitely that. delayed. But they don't... But they... But as it gets closer, even... Like, it, they won't. Like, they just... It's such... Like, if, if they realise, like, a week before going, oh, this isn't right, they can't... Like, it takes so long yeah. for anything to happen to Microsoft that it just goes down the chain. And Bethesda are able to just do their own thing. Yeah. Apparently, you know, I, was kind, just... I, I kind of want to see the original version of Redfall. They were going to launch in like I think it was March of, of 2023. I, I, I really want to. I really want to see that version. I, oh, I think maybe it was that autumn 2022 when it was really supposed to come. I want to see the original version that they delayed, and that this version has six extra months of polish in it. I want to see that original <laughs> version because it'd be better Jesus. or worse than Cyberpunk. That's the real when, question. When we talk about bad games these days, very often we don't actually mean a game that's a bad idea. What we mean is a game that's technically bad. Very often, when we when bad, games get really bad scores and they're notorious failures, it's because they're a technical disaster. Wrong, Gollum, terrible design. Terrible I know that's game, what makes Gollum so fun. Go everything. Gollum and Redfall are both really cool examples of games that are actually technically not that bad the problem no, is they're just actually shit. bad games they're actually bad and we don't actually get games that are like genuinely bad games that are still prominent games from we, major we, developers we and major publishers lot, we get a with lot of games. sorry this just sounds like the perfect time to segue into tears of a kingdom but i won't we'll get to that we'll get to that later Shh. well actually here's a question do you think right there's two options do you think Elder Scrolls 6, 6 will release before Apple releases a VR headset at a reasonable price. No, I think Apple will release a headset at a reasonable price first. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is sort of the same, right? But I was, actually, I was saying, this E3 is they're going to show off Starfield gameplay. Oh, look, you can build stuff, you can build your own spaceship, and I'm going to go, fuck yes, let's go. Um, and then next E3, here's DLC for Starfield, that's 2024. 2025, here's a CGI trailer for Elder Scrolls. 2026, here's the gameplay the, trailer the gameplay stuff uh games coming out this year if it's not late so i'm saying 2026 earliest for elder scrolls maybe 2027 i think bethesda have upped their uh development time from sort of the four or five years to about six seven now mm. definitely feels like they've stretched it quite a bit uh, i would also say that there is a wrinkle in this because that's when i think we're going to see elder scrolls I think we might see Fallout either before then or at the same time as then. No, they've Be they've explicitly stated the order is Starfield, Elder Scrolls, Fallout. Yes, yes, I, I'm very aware of that. But Microsoft are floundering like fucks. They've spent all these money, all this money on these like big studios, and what have they got to show for it so far? Not What's a huge your favorite amount. Xbox Series X exclusive. It's been around for how many years now? Got got any? Can you name one? Admittedly, I can't. Admittedly, I can't name any PlayStation exclusives either. Spider Man. Is, is, is God of War God of War exclusive still? God of War. God of War no. Two. Yeah. God, God of War Two. God of War Two is still exclusive. Ratchet and Clank isn't anymore. Yeah, but PC Returnal doesn't count. Any. It's console exclusive. Okay. PC special console exclusive. Magic. Okay. Um, I mean, you've got Demon Souls. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Nintendo. Nintendo's got the best first party exclusives yeah, this generation. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. They very yeah. often do. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> High Five Rush was fun. 
Uh, I couldn't play it. Uh, I don't have a I don't have a sense I of rhythm. rhythm. I could I yeah. literally yeah, no. I turned it down I, to I easy I turned it down to easy difficulty and I could barely do the tutorial because my brain cannot do rhythm games. Uh, I've got oh. rhythm, but as long as rhythm is all it needs from me. Yeah. If it needs like you have to focus on fighting, I'm like, fuck yourself, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I couldn't uh, do, no, I literally so, so. couldn't play it. I think the wrinkle here though is Microsoft are floundering and shit in the bed in quite a lot of ways, and I can see them going, hey, what if we give you a shit ton of money to make a new team? Or they'll go over to Obsidian, who they also own, and go, hey, could you just quickly bash out a, a Fallout game? I would not, yeah. Honestly, like, the dream scenario, though I, I'm probably dreaming and I'm biased because I want it to happen, is for them to say, look, we literally own In Exile and, and Obsidian and Bethesda. Didn't they say they so were... So what if they, we they just got all doing a... three of those guys together? Yeah, I swear they said they were doing some and like asked Fallout them to make Vegas Fallout New Republic or Fallout New Seattle or Fallout yeah. something with new in it so everyone knows what we're talking about. Also, it's a spin-off. That's another, you know, you build it in the Fallout 4 engine. Fuck it, it's holding up well exactly. enough. Exactly. Yeah, something that's a great. Can, something you that can make look in beautiful. two years. Yeah. Not least that yeah. they literally have the established rule that now Bethesda Fallouts happen on the East Coast and you've just got the West Coast reserved for other shit. Yeah. So, like, literally, you've just got a Fallout setting that doesn't impact the stuff that Bethesda does right over on the other side of America. Like, I they've literally genuinely... divided America in two and said, that's where the stuff that's not made by Bethesda goes. Yeah. I genuinely think we will see a Fallout before we see an Elder Scrolls. I would, I would love to see a new Fallout. A new Fallout that, that's... Even if it's, like, a ex weird experimental Fallout, I'd be, I'd be completely open to a different genre of Fallout. Oh yeah. yeah! I mean, this, it's I, I, it's you notable, know, just right? Try something a bit different. Fuck it. I know you. I know you don't like New Vegas, Daniel. But for all of New Vegas's faults, the fact that they made that what they made that in eighteen months, seventeen, seventeen months. Yeah, and, and it shows. <laughs> but when it, but it's it. I, I think a lot of it's aged poorly. Facet of it, from but the if, shitty voice acting to the shitty how everything. How dare you? To the. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matthew Perry should have won a fucking Oscar for the okay, role fine. of Matthew man Perry, Matthew Perry was Matthew machine. Perry was slightly well, out of his depth on certain lines, but like in general, he's not even that, that bad. That he's, game, right? For 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 all his faults, hey and there's a lot. It's very respectable. <laughs> Give him a, a shake for the, the Ben Man, will you? Hey, oh. the fact they, they made such a, a rich game. <laughs> that was his best take. <laughs> hey, Matthew, Jesus, act Matthew like Perry. someone's just shaking their boobs in your face. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's better than Peter Dinklage. <laughs> well, they didn't have but to think... burn Matthew Perry. It's true, they didn't have, have to. Yes. Mm. Literally, they didn't have to literally patch him out of the game. No, well, true. actually, admittedly, they're doing the, the Fallout 4 project that's, that's remaking Fallout New Vegas in Fallout 4. They can't reuse any of the sound or voice acting from the original game. So they're re-recording everything. Oh, and I'm they... curious. I'm assuming some of it will be better. No, <laughs> they were. Now they're bringing AI into it. Oh. I think AI is getting involved in that. Or Can at least we a, get a worse AO? That's it the might question. Possibly be an, it might possibly be a side project that's not tied to the original project, but I've seen a tech demo of people who basically fed the original lines into an AI and basically got the AI to functionally redo them and also allow them to add additional lines in the same voice, which is also useful for like modding purposes if you want to add additional content that's still voice acted. I and mean, it, it could be skeeves me out a little bit because basically you're stealing like somebody's voice performance uh, yeah. without yeah. their permission or anything. And that, that oh, I don't like it. <laughs> So there's yeah. the whole AI thing, right? Because obviously me and Daniel were watching that. That Apple conference is weird, right? Because it's, it's WWC, so they're talking about, like, tech specifically. And they kept bringing up that, like, hey, we've added this feature that uses, like, machine learning. But it was all, like, really practical stuff. It was like, hey, we've it re introduced machine learning autocorrect. I kind of assumed that's how yeah. autocorrect already worked. No, it's it's a lot more like it, it it learns what kind of words you type. It's a lot more complicated and advanced, apparently. You know, the, the example the weird, they the used thing was about autocorrect has always been. It doesn't seem to acknowledge like what what shape a keyboard is. Like it doesn't make the assumption that logically, if I've made an error, it's likely that the letter that needs changing might need to be changed to the key that's next to the key that's been pushed. Like, autocorrect never seems to do this, and it's really fucking well, weird. But apparently, this new, that, that's supposed to do it. And that's a great use of AI, I think. Mm. Um, their example was when you just want to write a ducking word, was what they said in the keynote, which I appreciated greatly. Yeah. Um, but, like, it, there's lots of nice little uses for it, like, in those little practical background things. But, like, when you're stealing, when you, like, redoing voice is kind of, 
Yeah, it's in a that's, weird. That's you know, that's that's a very you know, that's a, a high skill, really you know, important artistic performancey thing from a human that I feel like you, sh mm. you shouldn't you shouldn't steal. Like I don't know, like that was the thing the villain, the Little Mermaid, does right, stealing people's voices. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like I feel like in general, if you're doing the thing a Disney villain did, then that's that's a sign you you, you might be on the wrong side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then I again. Just... Um, you know, poisoning a bitch. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> she lives with seven dudes. Fuck it. I don't care. Like, just poison her. She's... I'm the fairest of the ball. Fuck you. Maybe I got the wrong ideas from the film. I mean, this is Daniel Snow White misogyny coming out. <laughs> not misogyny. It's not because she's a woman. It's because she's fucking ugly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, she looks like a fucking corpse, right? Let's be fair about Snow White, right? If anything, I'm, Snow, I'm... You think Snow White looks like a corpse? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm quickly White. just googling the original. You, Google. we're talking, the original, the original yes. animated Snow White. Yes. A, what? Because she's very pale. Yeah, she looks like she's got fucking. She's just. I mean, the clue flat. was in the name in many ways. Yes, that's true. She looks like she's been made up with Homer Simpson's makeup gun, and then it's just been <laughs> smeared about her face. <laughs> No, I, that's a good. That's a good reference. I'll give it that. Yeah, that. That's an excellent reference. I'll She's got tiny one. eyes. She looks barely human, right? There's nothing. Well, she is a cartoon, in fairness. Well, yeah, yeah actually, it, is, like... it is. One thing I hadn't noticed right now is yes, if you look at like the original footage versus uh, how she's drawn or when Disney draws her today, they have actually oh, yeah. very Completely clearly different. updated her to look a little bit less whatever the fuck was going on with the original face. Oh yeah. yeah. That's actually, you know, I'd never noticed that before today, but that's actually fascinating. But you are right. There's something weirdly uncanny valley about her face in actual clips from the original. And whenever they draw her to draw her today, they have actually changed her style. Yeah. Quite the original yeah, the eye bit... shape, the eye shape, the nose, the lip shape, everything actually. She's like a complete different. Per oh shit! Is this like original, Avril Lavigne? Like when... This is like Avril Lavigne. The original Snow White's been fucking killed, and they've replaced her with a clone. Good. Oh, my God. Fuck Snow White. We're on to you, Melissa. Melissa. Yeah, Melissa Lavigne, Avril Lavigne's clone that replaced her. Oh, is that the Avril Lavigne? This is the best conspiracy up. theory. Why do you Jesus always bring this oh, up? It's always fucking Avril Lavigne every goddamn day. Because it's the Avril best Levine this, conspiracy Avril Levine that, theory. Skater boy here, skater boy there. Like, come on. Have you seen any you, other, like... You're women. not wrong, Dan. Snow White has had Snow some White work universe. done. Snow White, is, <laughs> Snow White has been under the surgeon's knife a fair few times. Yeah. Blimey. Definitely. <laughs> She's horrifying. <laughs> like... I honestly would be like, hey, I need to kill her. Either I need to kill her or replace this mirror, and this mirror was expensive. So I'm going to kill her. See what happens. You know what it is? She's just bug testing the mirror. That's all the, uh, the fucking the Wicked Witch is doing. She's like, who's the first of the world? Snow White. Snow White, she looks like a fucking golem. Like, <laughs> the problem is, Let's... it is hard to evaluate which one of them is fairer, if either. Because, yes, the Wicked Witch is wearing this kind of don't want to it what is like a, a wraparound hood thingy. I don't even know what it's called. Looking up Snow White Witch so I could see Evil Queen, that was her name, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the evil stepmother or whatever. Yeah. Not she's an evil stepmother. She's fucking she's not, bad. Oh, is that right? Cinderella? That's Cinderella. Yeah, That's it's Cinderella. the evil queen. Yeah, evil but queen. She's, Hot she's, wearing, shit, mate. she's wearing this wraparound thing that makes it very hard to evaluate whether in fact which of them is fairer. Because you're right, something is wrong with Snow White's face. But equally, the evil queen has got, like, you know, most of us covered up. So it's I very hard to evaluate. The evil queen. Just saying. Even in old hag form, right? Yeah. That's Jesus the... Christ, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she'd fuck you up. That's what I like about the evil queen. She's like, yeah, I'm going to fucking... She looks sharp. Mm. Yeah, she's got sharp features. So they look like fucking... It looks like someone's used like the smoothing tool all over Snow White's face. <laughs> you see, the problem we've got is if we establish, and I assume now that, you know, it's all Disney, we've got this and we've got to assume this is true, that all Disney fairy tales happen in the same universe, then logically the mirror should have basically said, well, neither of you. Like, you know, there are multiple hotter Disney princesses out there. Sorry. Well, if she wasn't going for a hot eye. It was fairer. She just wanted to be whiter than her. Uh, the, it's a race. It's a big racism thing, Snow White. 
I mean, it's true that what? they are Disney both very the... pale. <laughs> they are both extremely pale. That's true. Yeah, but right, here's the thing. Wicked Witch hangs out at a castle all day. Yeah. Right? No sunlight. Working well, I on think castles do have windows. Nah, she don't have any windows. Probably and bigger windows than, like, you know, a miner's cottage. Yeah, but no, but she's not. She's always outside, Snow White. You're always hanging outside, that's singing true. at the That's true. She's hanging out with the animals. Thing. She's probably going to yeah. pick up a bit of a tan. That's that's yeah. true. Or In get sunburned, given her skin so pale. She's going to get burnt. Yeah. She's going to get burnt. And yeah. I just think that the Wicked Witch is putting the effort in. Evil Queen, so much effort. Snow White, she doesn't deserve that's it. That's true, actually. There's, there was no reason to poison Snow White. Just, like, leave her out in the forest for a bit. She's going to get horribly sunburned. She will definitely not be <laughs> fairer in the most literal sense than the Evil Queen at that point. If Snow White was ginger, she would have burnt like a fucking crisp. <laughs> Wouldn't need no dragon or nothing in the final act. Just she'd have fucking... Wait, there was a dragon in, in the in final the act of Snow White? I don't fucking You're thinking of remember. Sleeping Beauty at this point. I'm thinking of all of them. I'm thinking you're thinking of Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, I mean, all, Snow All the White, ones from the pre-50s are the same White does, Snow White doesn't need a dragon. They just, you just like, snog a corpse in that salt set. Yeah, you've got There's essentially no a corpse in that one. What was I think it? you just it's, blended together several different stories here. It's the dwarves, and then she pricks her finger, and then she's got to go to the ball, but she leaves a slipper behind. It's all actually, I'm not 100% sure how they managed to stretch Sleeping Beauty out to, like, feature length. Like, there's there's no cocking story in that uh, thing. It's because it's they are, are they... Wait, hang on, which is the one with the with the, the nice lady witches? Yeah, that, so, that's Sleeping Beauty. That's Sleeping Beauty. You mean the fairy, oh, the good stretch. fairies, the fairy godmothers? Yeah, that's how they stretch it out because there's like 80 minutes of them baking a cake. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's Maleficent in that one, isn't it? Yeah, where is it? Okay, her name is Evil Queen. No, Maleficent. Evil Queen is Snow White. Maleficent is, yeah. is, is is Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, Angelina Jolie in that weird fucking movie. <laughs> is it, uh, Sorry, two it? weird fucking movies. They're too mm. similar. There's all this like, oh, this woman needs help. Well, they joke about it in so fucking Wreck It Ralph, don't they? Um, I don't know because Wreck It Ralph is shit. <laughs> also, no, it's a bit in Wreck It Ralph. Sleeping Beauty, also known as Princess Aurora, also known as Briar Rose. Briar yeah. Rose. Like that was a she, wrestling when she, name. When she, when she, when she, <laughs> I was about to say, you know, when she was on tour with her band, but that works too. It's a wrestling name. <laughs> and in this corner, Briar we Rose. Need a three pounds. It's Briar Rose. <laughs> And Amazing. in the other side, it's the big fat bastard of New Japan, or whatever the fuck it is. It's Baymax! <laughs> and then they wrestle, it's great. Yeah. Where was he from? New that. Tokyo? Neo Tokyo? It'd be called something like that, wouldn't it? I don't actually know, because I can't remember that film. Mm. But I said New Japan, because that's the wrestling. They were in San Francisco in that film. They were in San Francisco in Iron Man? Yeah, he, in, in Baymax. Baymax? No, Yeah, Baymax. the Iron Man was... remake, because it's just Iron Man. Yeah, they were in. They were in. They were in San Francisco. Were they? Was it? Yeah, called, but like, it was like Neo sort of like, San Francisco or something. Yeah, but it was like this Neo Japanese sort of infused tech yeah. San Francisco. I didn't remember that. I don't remember seeing the. Well, I like how we always establish in stories how it's the future because a city's been named, you know, New or Neo City. And I want to see the moment where that change gets, you know, done. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, when's, like, when's who London was gonna mayor be when they just sat London. down in London and said, "Okay, so we're New London now." Like, yeah. Yeah, how did why did was you make that choice? I have actually no. It might. In what Paris happened Paris, at that I moment have, that made you think you were going to do that? I have a new Berlin. I do. I have new Berlin. You have new Berlin. New Berlin is a is a is a location in uh, Paris Paradox. Explain at what point <laughs> I mean, Berlin that, that, chose to go over to being no, New Berlin and why this happened. It's on, it's, a, it's on a different planet. If it's a different city, okay, it's a, a different, different city. Thing entirely. That's fine. Yeah. We've got New York's a new fucking. Everything, you know, well, like, it's in fine. New York. Yeah, could you imagine, right? But like, not to uh, shit. Oh, why would you want to make it a new one? It's all cobbled streets and fucking. It's like fucking. It's confusing this fucking thing in the world. When I went down the book tour, it was like, all right, go down this cobbly fucking road, and then go down that cobbly fucking road. Past yeah, you know, I wish they'd. I wish they'd have just kept it as New Amsterdam. That would have been much better. Hmm. Nah, but then you got to have all the red light district and all that. Yeah, the, the New York is like that. Oof. Not anymore. Did it up. It's all, you get it? Oh, it's all, they did it up. They got rid of all of... Hang on, we can't care about sex workers. The new GTA hasn't been announced yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's, that's when you're allowed to care. That's when you have to care. That's the time, isn't it? It's the only time... It? People are listening going, what's a sex worker? I, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. GTA 6 will be announced pretty soon. And then, uh, you know, we'll carry on with that. I wonder if Xbox is going to announce it. At this, uh, I thingy. mean... <sighs> I can see that. They've always been close with Rockstar, haven't they? 
Yeah, I mean, the guy, remember the GTA 4 tattoo at E3? No. No. Nobody remembers the GTA 4 tattoo? God, no, what? When it came out with, I can't remember who it was, but somebody came out with a GTA 4 tattoo at the Xbox conference, because GTA used to be basically like PlayStation only. Was it a San Andreas tattoo? Maybe it was San Andreas. Fuck it, I've got to look this up now. This is a thing. I didn't make this up. This happened. I saw it. Well, you say that, but you do make a lot of shit up. We just need a new random console exclusive duration that no one sees coming. I just want to remind everyone that before Rockstar were Rockstar, DMA Design actually did some exclusive games with Nintendo. So I want GTA 6 to be exclusively on the Switch, you. All right? I mean, Bring they couldn't, it full circle. Fucking, John, they couldn't get GTA 3 running on a Switch. Like, fucking good luck. <laughs> it was Peter Moore at E3 2006. He announced that GTA 4 was coming to Xbox with a tattoo on his arm saying Grand Theft Auto 4. Oof. Is it a permanent tattoo or just a temporary tattoo? I kind of hope it was permanent because that's yeah. funnier. I don't <laughs> think funny. so, though, because it looks like shit. Look there. Mm. Picture in the chat. That oh, no my God, it looks photoshopped. Like. <laughs> what? That looks like a, that looks like, a, looks like that it was painted def, on. That's definitely a Photoshop. That's not real. <laughs> no, I, I think I think that's been painted on. It by doesn't like a look right. Or that's just, yeah. That's more. body paint at absolute best. <laughs> that is not a tattoo. That's body paint. That was the that was the reveal that GTA Four was coming to the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty because mm. I'm pretty so sure looks like, like a tit. Did you was GTA PlayStation exclusive for ages? It was well, GTA a lot, a lot was of stuff was PlayStation exclusive because at the time the alternative was it being on the N64 and no one wanted to work on the N64. Well, no, <laughs> GTA, GTA 3 was was PlayStation exclusive for a while. And then, like, two years later, they were like, oh, shit, we're bringing it to the Xbox. And they, they did loads of upgrades to it. And they added, like, you know, fingers to the character models and, you know, some clutter. And then for some reason, every remastered version of GTA 3 is based on the PS2 version, not the Xbox version. Yeah. Even though the Xbox version has, like, hand skeletons <laughs> instead of, like, you know, Lego hands. I really enjoy that period of gaming about 20 years ago when, like, you know, when technology moved forward, you could actually see it. Mm. And we didn't have to have trailers that had, like, back and forth swipes to remind everyone, look, look, I promise it's better than the thing we're remastering. I strongly disagree with that because that Matrix demo, uh, yeah, no, the Unreal amazing. 5 Matrix demo made me go, holy fucking shit. There's a few things I've played, like the Unreal 5 Matrix demo. Like, sometimes when I'm in Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm flying, I'm like, oh, my God, right? Like, you're looking at it and you're like, this yeah. is insane. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, right, I know I've brought it up a few times, but it, it's it's kind of, it's a big cornerstone point of Apple announcing that headset because... Oh, he's keep bringing start, it back. Matt, okay, well, no, I'll, I'll, fine, I'll say it, Matt. I'm considering buying a Mac. There. I said it. I wasn't even going to try and get that out of you, but he's not even joking. It's hilarious. Um, I don't know. I am. I was looking at. I want to because I wrote my first book on a on a laptop, on a Chromebook, because I wanted a really light, no, nothing really on it. Laptop. I just want to say, Daniel, when you bought that Chromebook, the laptop I am recommending you did exist, and I did say that's a good choice for you. Shut up. Like, no. And the Chromebook was great, little bit of tech, but it, I hated that it had to always be connected to the internet, and then it died literally as I was finishing the book off. So for the second book, I was like, I'm not buying a new laptop. So I yeah. wrote it on my computer and I've hated writing on my computer. I want to write on a laptop because then I can take it places. So I was looking at laptops and I was like, well, there's fanless ones you can get now that are pretty. And I saw the Mac and I was like, well, it's, I hate Apple, but it's nice. Well, it's the th so the quiet. thing, every time Apple have entered a product category, right? Because they always do enter a product category late, right? Like smartphones existed before the iPhone and tablets what? existed before the iPad. I thought they the invented iPad. smartphones. What? I thought they invented everything. No, but this is the thing. Whenever they've entered these product categories, it has really pushed that industry. Because they, they're the biggest company in the world, right? So it kind of yeah. makes it go forward. Was so the BlackBerry the first AR. smartphone? Technically, was what though? Was the no. BlackBerry the first smartphone? Depends no. on what you define as a smartphone, but no. Mm. Yeah, no, there was a lot because they had those weird like PDA smartphones. Like I remember using Excel on a fucking PDA smartphone in like two thousand six. You know, like, um, but. I, I'm wondering because they they made a big thing about they didn't really touch on games at all for that headset. I mean, Kojima was there, but it was just to announce Death Stranding for the Mac, which, of fucking course it was. There was nothing interesting about Kojima just turning up. <laughs> yeah, he turns up anywhere. God, he, God, he will. They're like, oh, it's Kojima-san. And Kojima's like, hello, I'm bringing Death Stranding to the Mac. And then that was it. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Is that it? But they, um, th those new headsets. I mean, John, have you seen the price of them? I've seen, I've known nothing about them, but I've seen it. Yeah, it's three and a half grand, right? Woo, three and a half grand. Wait, it's US dollars. Look, starting it. Yeah. Starting at. Okay. That doesn't include the super strong battery that only lasts two hours. That doesn't include uh, getting like the face shaping bit done or lenses. Yeah. Like, but and this me is, and I this is watching mixed it. reality, right? 
Yeah, but it like when they were showing off all the features of it, me and Daniel are kind of texting each other, going, "This thing is fucking like it. It looks it, it looks expensive. Like it, the amount of shit in it, it's clearly so expensive to make." I'd but like they to. Put, I'd like to quote some of that stuff. Mm. Go ahead. They put a lentecul- They put a lenticular screen on the outside of the headset so it can accurately three D render your eyes outside. Yeah, that's dumb. And also, <laughs> they, like, people can see your eyes. That just feels like that's going to. That just feels like you know a good starting point for a horrifying Doctor Who monster. I mean, it does look pretty. It does yeah, look pretty. Uh, lights. It's dumb. It's really heavy having a screen on the front. Like, it's got, there's no top strap. At all. No. Oh. However, it's incredibly thin, and Apple have ma- are going to make that as that's going to be fucking light and comfortable. I actually really trust that they're going to do that. No, I don't. I genuinely well, don't. Because so, if uh, I've got yeah. lenses, right? If I've got lenses in that thing, and it's mm. got a screen on the front of it, and it's got a battery pack pulling down from one side, that just feels like it's going to be the most uncomfortable fucking the thing, thing in the world. So the thing is, right? The, the AirPods Max, right? Which are the the, the the headphones I'm wearing right now. They are very similarly designed. Right? They have the same metal. They have the same the crown. They have the same like mesh. It's the same materials, right? And when you pick these up, these are fucking heavy. And everyone who picked these up and saw them went, that looks uncomfortable as shit. And it's heavy, right? It's, they are the most comfortable pair of headphones I've ever worn in my fucking life. Like, to, for Apple, many things, but I do actually trust them to make a comfortable headset. Like, as, as much as it might look uncomfortable, I actually do trust that it will be comfortable. I it, but I don't, don't know if it'll be good. I, I don't know don't. if it'll be good. If it doesn't have a top strap, I'm not interested. Because I've tried VR headsets that don't have a top strap. And it is an uncomfortable hellhole. I'm excited to try it. I mean, it's weird. Like, it is full mixed reality. Apparently, it's... But what is it for? What problem is it solving? Okay, it's one of the big the things they announced, John... don't have enough money. Well, they have... so. One of the big things they announced is Excel, John. So I think that might excite you. The Microsoft Excel announced a, a VR, AR version that floats so, in the but, air in front of you. It's not... Right, here's the thing, right? It's not a VR headset. As much as it can do VR, its focus is basically, look, you can put all of your screens in the real world. And that's it. Yeah, okay, what does it, it do that me just being sat in front of a large monitor doesn't do? It can make they the were monitor it can 100 feet it. wide, 100 feet in size. So yes, can... but if I have an Excel spreadsheet that is that big, well, I, I agree can't with you, John. see the cells over ah, there. Ah, but you see, of course, uh, what it also does is it's got motiony clicking things, so you have to have your hand in front of you and do pinchy motions, and that's how oh, you Oh, no, you don't have things. to have your hand in front of you. They made a big deal that you can just have your hand in your lap. Yeah, which just, just means that I'll just be setting it off all the time because I'm always fiddling with shit. <laughs> It's true, it's not the... good for people who have fidget toys. That's going to no, fuck it up. The... Hang on, let me just check the fidget toys on my desk. Yeah, yeah, you know one of the weirdest things they... <laughs> oh shit, the, one of the weirdest going things bananas. They <laughs> one of the weirdest things they announced, John, was that they went... Um, they, Disney, Disney, fucking Bob Iger turned up, right? And was like, Disney Plus is announcing a big thing with it. And they're like, hey, when you watch a Disney Plus show, like you can watch the Disney Plus show in like a virtual... They're like, oh look, you can as watch the Mandalorian. As long as the show doesn't run for more than two hours total. Yeah, yeah, no, they, yeah. They, keep, they keep you can plug it in, obviously, but they keep kind of skimming over the two hour thing because that's not good. Yeah. Um, and then they were like, "Oh, you, you can like watch a sports game." Admittedly, there, there, there was a bit we're watching basketball. Not if there's a half time, like, you can't. <laughs> no, but, but if there's the a half time bit, celebration, you just gotta take it off and plug it in during that. They had like they had like the, the, the basketball on, on a big TV in front of you, but then like on the coffee table, it drew like a little three D basketball court, and it was showing the game like in three D with all these little three D basketball men doing the game, and I'm like, oh, that's sick, pointless but sick, um, and it's all just it was a lot of gimmicks, right? It was just a lot of like they were kind of being like, oh, developers can do it, and I'm like, but it's three and a half grand, okay. like, even if you're as curious as fuck. Okay. Like, we, I, I, I'm going to say something stupid right now. So mm. prepare yourselves. Okay. If the coolest now, function... Shut up. If the <laughs> coolest function of this is like stuff like, hey, it's going to project cool stuff into the real world while you're doing mm. other stuff. Like, mm. it's not virtual reality. Like it's, it's augmenting the reality around it, right? It can do full virtual, but Then yeah. why are we even still making it a set of heavy glasses you pin to your face rather than, say, like, you know, not having it be some form of a 3D projector thing? Ah, because... That simply projects a cool 3D thing so you don't have to be wearing the dumb glasses. Because, because that doesn't exist. It's, it's got two processors in it. And fuck you, that's why. No, seriously, why is it not just like a 3D projector? Because well, you, a 3D it, projector because you need to have doesn't set exist. up. This is a thing designed that you can... I understand, but Why right? is this not just a three a portable 3D projector you could put down somewhere and tell it to project because a thing 3D projectors onto the surface don't exist, around it? John. 
They don't exist. That we that, that technology doesn't. We don't have uh, holograms. Well, have yes, you, but they could make it, couldn't they? They're making well, this. What if instead they made the thing I suggested, which is you better? Can't just you don't have make to wear a, a stupid hologram. heavy set of things on your heads. That's not. Uh, honest, but if you can do a 3D projector like that, why would you need it to sit on the desk? Why don't you have it attached to your eyes and just 3D project the stuff onto your eyes? Well, why not, while you're eye, why not have it sit in your shoulder and make it look like a really cool, like, parrot? I would All love right. to just wander around with a parrot on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, why don't we just have holodex? Why don't we just have holodex, That I can just say, you know, Robo Polly, project the baseball game. And just in front of me, there's a 3D cool baseball game now in front of my face while I'm walking along the street. And I don't have to be wearing, like, okay, if you gave me a choice between wearing big, dumb, stupid VR goggles or having a robot parrot that can project lasers out of its eyes, I will take the parrot every time. And I everyone like in the, the comments will agree with me that they would rather have the parrots. I like the idea of alternate reality. I like the idea of having a desk that is just cool stuff on it, and I put my thingies on, and I see the screen when I'm working, and I take them off, and I don't. Yeah, like, like you're need in fucking Tony Stark's little basement in the Iron Man mm. films. Yeah, you can yeah just screen, say yeah, project project this and wave your hands around, and shit happens. The screen is a set of goggles that you can just have in your head, and it's smaller and it's neater. Uh, and you can have things bigger, and you could use it as entertainment shit. You know, all that but stuff. But the weakness is the fun. goggles, because v- all VR headsets are hot and uncomfortable and leave you yes. with dumb marks around your eyes and leave you really sweaty and shit. That is the problem mm. with that VR. That is the weakness. So that's the bit we need to get rid of and replace with my fictional technology. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be great <laughs> if we had someone should job, just but invent. we don't. Like, I'm okay. sure a 3D holograph projector's a thing that exists. It's no. Not. Also, what's the difference between a hologram and a holograph? We've made one of those up. Which one of them made up? <laughs> Holograph? That's just a graph without anything underneath that you can't integrate. Yeah, Holographic is a thing. I've heard that word before. Here we yeah, go. That's... Look, I've, I've Googled like 3D uh-huh. hologram projection systems. And like, that's a thing that appears to exist. No, yeah, but it's like if, a if the room is full of smoke. One angle and it's a bit 3D. Yeah, yeah but just make that this is about, better. No, this is about John. having a, your screens, whatever screens you need for the day. So it's because I've got two screens. I used to have three. Got rid of one. But if I want a third screen to go back, that's effort and faff. But if it, if I'm working on something, I'm like, oh, I need like more monitors. I could just hmm. go boop, boop, boop. See, but this is the thing. If that kind of headset, right, the concept they've shown off, if it was super fucking comfortable and it had a really long battery life, and it was like, and when you had it on, it was perfect. I'd fucking wearing it all the time. I'd do so much shit with it because you can just, yeah, you yeah. can just make more monitors. You could, you could just be like, oh, I'd like a fucking cinema screen over there. And because it's got lidar sensing, it can draw stuff behind things in your environment quite accurately. So you yeah. can put like a thing behind your sofa, and it draws shadows on the ground for everything accurately. And I, I, something I really liked is when someone walks into your field of view, they sort of appear in the v- virtual world in, that you're in. They're just kind of like, hello, and I'm like. <laughs> It's, it's, I, I use it all the time. It sounds cool, but like it, it is cool. But honestly, I just don't want to wear a VR headset for that long. Yeah, no, you'll, I get, agree. you'll get hot and sweaty and uncomfortable, and probably get yeah. a headache. And I don't. And and the, the the most important thing about this is is the two hour battery life is not enough. And also, no, three thousand five hundred is just prohibitively expensive. Yeah, I mean, it, admittedly, they have named it the Vision. Was it the Vision Reality? I can't remember. What it's yeah, called. Vision Whatever. Pro. Okay, they've, they've Eyes put Pro. Two. That's what they've invented. Eyes too. They, they've put Pro on the end of it, which does imply that there'll be like an air later, and they'll definitely lower the price of the, that Pro in a year or two, hundred yeah. percent. Like um, when proper VR came out, <clears throat> which I am a fan of, and you're spending a grand to get like a, a fully 3D environment thing that you're only going to play for two hours because you're hacking things to bits and you're exhausted. Yeah. Mm. Even that's plugged in, though. Uh, that's fine. Like, I couldn't see that. But if this is, like, sort of, like, software to use in the office, this has got to be, like, eight hours comfortable. Yeah. I don't even yeah. have a ha- pair of headphones that are eight hours comfortable. I just don't think... I need to breathe, baby. I need, I need to see. No, I get that. You know, well, I need... That, 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 that's the wonder with them. I, mean, I wonder if, obviously, the two-hour battery life... I wonder if that's, like, a... Because it's an external battery pack. So on a technical level, they could just have a bigger battery pack, right? Mm. Yeah. But I wonder if they've kind of very purposely made it only two hours, so you have to take it off. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it is using so much processing power to do, because it's two 4K screen. The resolution is ludicrous, because of course it is. And I just think well, you remember. two processors, I just genuinely think it needs to suck that much juice. Up. Also, well, so. the, the battery pack appears to just be attached to the cable there's no like you can't yeah, no, attach classic apple. the fucking the, the, battery the, pack uh, but also i mean think about it, you can't just like swap the battery pack out because then you're turning your entire computer off yeah I, 
Yeah, that's weird. I I need to see how that works in practice because it seems really weird. The um, the, like the screen thing because like when they were going over the specs of it, I'm like, okay, so they've got the same processor as in that little MacBook Air you want, right? They've got similar screens that are in the... Uh, no, it's got another process. They've got the R1 or something. Yeah, they've got that, and then they've got another process. And then they've M2 got screens R1. that are better than what's in the iPhones. They're, apparently, they're curved displays. They're like dome-shaped. Actually, the, the displays themselves are dome-shaped. Yeah. Rather than it having dome-shaped lenses, which sounds fun. Um, and it, it's just there's so much tech in there. And like those processors are really power efficient. I mean, that MacBook Air gets like, a 13-hour battery life. But you're right. It's got so many fucking cameras. It's got, like, three fucking... Dis- it's got, like, five... Uh, well, it's got the tech of the screen on the front and then the two inside displays. And then it's running a pair of speakers and it's running, like, all these cameras and it's running a LiDAR sensor and it's scanning your eyes constantly and, it, <laughs> like, yeah. and it's doing so much fucking shit. So... Uh, yeah, but the battery pack thing, like, if it's an external battery pack on a technical level, there's no reason they... I'm wondering, right, if the base battery pack is like two hours, but like you could pay an extra five hundred dollars and get a bigger battery pack. <laughs> Seems like an Apple thing to do because they I charge. I think the two hour is the bigger one. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, that's what I'm, the, that's what I'm thinking. The thing is, like, I I'd be fine with it because obviously, if if I just can plug it in, if I'm sat at a desk, I can just plug it in, right? I don't care if it if it's not battery powered. But obviously, I'd want to be able to somehow swap to battery power without having to turn it off. mm Hmm. If That'd you're tied to thing. a desk, though, what's the point of it? No, but this is my this is my thing, right? If I'm just sat at a desk for a few hours, I might as well plug it in. But if I could just unplug from the desk, because it's just like a little magnetic thing, pull the magnet off, put a magnet on for the battery and walk away seamlessly, that'd be okay. But based on what we've seen, it's not that. You'd have to turn it off, right? You'd have to, because there's no battery in it. Yeah. <laughs> if you unplug it, it's going to turn off, surely. Yeah. Plus, I'm, is... I'm not 100% convinced by the resolution. Like, I know that's a big number, but also it's really close to you. They like, made you know, a the point. Be- even the best VR headsets we've already got on the market right now have also got well, really big numbers for their resolution. No, they but didn't it still say looks it was a 4K really display. blurry because it's really um, close to your eyes. They said, what was the specific wording they used? They said that if you had a screen in the VR headset, the screen in the VR headset would be 4K. Didn't say this. They, they actually they gave the pixel density. They didn't actually say the resolution of the screens, interestingly, but I think it's because they're... It's 4 5K. Yeah, cause, and they're weird, like, they're curved, they're completely circular, like, dome displays, which I appreciate are going to be a bit weird to... But it's just... still not going to be nice and razor sharp because no VR headset always is, because no matter how pixel-dense the screen is, it's still a screen that's mm. extraordinarily close to your eyeball. Well, what... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't this think is, the very... technology exists to have a absolute, you know, crystal clear, perfectly sharp clarity ah. of image like you would have on a ah. big monitor you're sitting a, a foot or two back from that close to your eyeball. I agree. Ah. But you are missing out on one of the new technological advancements they did where they have managed to shrink down a pixel to one sixty fourth of the size of an iPhone pixel. Yeah, apparently they are fucking tiny pixels, like they are. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? I'm, I'm having a look. Uh, so the yeah, apparently the PPI of the display is three thousand six hundred eighty pixels per inch, which is ludicrous sounding. Quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Someone estimated the Vision Pro resolution per eye being thirty-two, like three thousand two hundred by three thousand six hundred mm-hmm. per right, eye. Yeah. yeah. Um, 11.5 million pixels per screen. And the screens are the size of a postage stamp. So... Hmm? <laughs> like, they made a big deal that they, they the, the lenses and the way that the screens are built, that you shouldn't be able to see the pixels. But I don't know. Like, I need to try the fucking thing. We're not buying one. It's three and a half fucking grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, emailed, I emailed Apple Press for the first time. I'd be like, hey, can we have a free one? <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, Sony didn't even send us a PSVR 2, so I don't know if Apple are going to send us a well, I hate the PSVR 1. 2 is probably a lot yeah. better, but I don't know, because I'm not going to buy one, because what's the point? What's the point? That's, it, it's how it compares to the Index. Actually, it's, I, the big one is the... Um, what's the... The Rift... What's it called? The Rift Pro. Yeah. Like, the, the big one... Because we, before a while ago, I remember we were looking at the Rift, and I really wanted to get one just because you could hack a Beat Saber and play at a park and have, like, the longest comical... <laughs> like, you would have to sprint across a park to play all of Beat Saber because mm-hmm. it could track you in just massive environments. That sounds so fun. And we didn't because Facebook are Facebook and Facebook are just 
the worst people. But I don't know. I don't know if it's going to actually make VR a thing, because for the longest time it's kind of just sat in this weird little niche. Well, it's a niche, and I'll explain why it's a niche. Because mm. VR is fucking incredible, right? You put mm. on a VR headset, you're in a different place, hacking up monsters, playing Beat Saber Queen. It's fucking amazing, right? You cannot mm. share that experience. No. There is no way... Like, if I if I put on that Apple TV motherfucker, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna... Let's watch a film. We all need one. It's the same problem 3D yeah. TV had. I mean, it's Bloomberg reporting that Apple wants to shift uh, 900,000 of these in the first year. Mm. Which I think is going to be a hard push. Mm. I could see them now, selling I, I, I just want to go one thing you said there, which is, I think there is a way to make a VR a cool party thing, which is at one point when we had some uh, some friends over and I cracked out the VR and set it up, I also mirrored it to the, 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 TV, both the yeah. visual and the sound uh, to the TV so people could see what the person was seeing. And yeah. people actually quite enjoyed watching other people doing the VR. Like, there, there is a way, but like... I don't think it's ever a thing that anyone's going to be doing routinely, day to day. Like, you know, if I've got well, a quiet Mesa evening, I might sit to. down for like four hours and enjoy some Civ Six or some Elden Ring or some Skyrim or something I like going back to, some Total War, for example. I don't think I would ever do that. There's no VR game I would do that with. VR games I might nip into for the experience for 20, 30 minutes, occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, I like it's, 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 I think it's a I think thing. there's two there's still a lot of VR and a lot of augmented reality that's still novelty factor and gimmick experience stuff. Oh yeah, like I play um uh, I can't remember what it is like a, a real time strategy kind of thing on the on the on the on the VR. Um and it's not it's not a great game. Like out of all the strategy games I played, it's like sort of in the bottom half. But the fact that I get to see the little men and I get to see the little planes flying around that I'm guiding, and I get to guide them by drawing a line in 3D to where I want them to go and bomb shit. It's fucking amazing. And it elevates yeah. it so much. But it's still just a fun experience you wouldn't want to do every day. Yeah, but I wouldn't but, want to the, play These headsets do not, yet, ex do not yet have the utility that means either personally or professionally, I see a use case where people actually would need and want to be making them a routine part of their lives. Well, this is... I mean, have you heard, like, in Meta, right? Because obviously Meta keeps trying to fucking push fucking the Metaverse. Let's do everything in virtual reality, right? Yeah. And they've shifted their entire business focus to that. And they've had to repeatedly... They've given all of their staff a fucking, like, Oculus. And... They had to keep putting out things, being like, hey, you, you have to use them for at least an hour a day. Because no one was fucking, even in the office where they, yep. they're making them, they're not fucking using them. Because as, as we've established, no matter how good the experience is, if yep. they're uncomfortable to wear. Your face gets sweaty. And, yep. like, a, a lot of, I hear a lot of people say this. I hear people, you know, when they're talking about, you know, certain headsets and certain things and certain expenses. Like, you know, I, I didn't follow the Apple news hugely, but I did see some people saying on Twitter, like, oh, well, bear in mind, based on the price tag and the name, it's obviously a professional tool for corporate purchasers etc the consumer version will come later i was like okay i have worked in professional corporate <laughs> space for better part of a decade before i started doing this in big offices and in tiny offices and i cannot think of one instance or one job or one anything where we would have all benefited from having either virtual reality or augmented reality i, I mean, do there, not know when people people just kind of wave a flag at this because they oh it's 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 for the corporate clients like Yes, but what are these corporations doing with them? They showed what? in 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 the in the pre, in the keynote that one of the things they showed was like it was a bunch of people in a room doing a meeting, but they were like they were mocking up a production line, like a physical production line using three D models in the physical space, and they were placing them where they would want to place them, and they could all see where they were yeah. physically. So they were like they were laying it out in virtual reality in real time in real place, and that's but obviously that's a very niche. That's yeah, a that's, very a, specific that's not a thing case. you're go you're not going to be planning a new factory every day, are you? No. 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 I mean, I and... do because I like those kind of video games. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, just want, I want to say, I've been reading because lots of people have had a hands-on with it now. Almost every been. single review has had a, a variation of this line. Uh, the headset was comfortable with a cushy fabric lining around the face, a headband keeping it uh, strapped to my head. But like every other headset I've tested, it started to feel a bit heavy and uncomfortable by the end of my 30-minute demo. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And that's going to kill it. That's going to literally, it's useless. Because they they are marketing it the way they have entirely like everything about that keynote. They were like, 
the implication was you always keep it on, right? Like if someone comes up and talks to you, you keep it on. You're just doing stuff around the house. You're making dinner. It's on. Like everything was just everyone just kind of going about their day with it on. Yeah. But I, like we obviously did that fucking desert bus VR thing. And obviously I, I like to think half of the appeal of that and half of why it was a bit of a marathon for us is because we sat in a VR headset for eight hours. Yeah, it was because it's fucking uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah. Physically, I've been in a VR headset. It's a deadly, like, have you seen all the videos that people filmed when they announced the price? And all the no. people groan in the audience at the Apple. Oh, I did. Thing. I did see some mass groans. Yes, that was quite fun. That's the best audience groan. groan I've seen since Blizzard <laughs> decided to announce mobile gaming. No, there was. Uh, got, don't not, you guys the, have the, phones? The, oh, do do you guys have headsets? No, Is this do, a do you remember, joke? A few, a few years so ago, Apple announced a like big fancy monitor. Right, they're like six K fucking monitor, and they were like, "It's five thousand pounds." And then the stand is an optional extra for a thousand, and the entire audience went, "Ooh!" <laughs> and it was, it was wonderful to watch because you're watching the guy on stage react to the fact that everyone went, "Ooh!" And he looks like he's about to die. <laughs> but I feel like this is a different thing because they're kind of pitching this as where they're going in the future. I think this is their future vision. While like, everyone else seems to be fucking on with the idea of a foldable phone, they've gone, "Well, mm. what about this AR version of?" of uh of that connectivity and mm. it just as much as it's a cool fucking gimmick and it's really fun vr is really fun i don't want to live in the vr until it is comfortable oh yeah i mean i'm, I'm reading and a verge article here somebody who wears glasses that get uncomfortable there's is a limit to the amount of fucking weight you can have on your face well, yes. no, so th- this th- is this going to require article. a new form of i think absolute new like entire type of micro technology where you can effectively yeah, yeah. just put on a pair of glasses that are the same weight and size as a pair of glasses and it could just magically spray stuff on the screens and that yeah. technology does not exist right now and someone's gonna have oh, to invent it before this google... is gonna have the level of adoption facebook already wishes it did google lens tried to do that yeah yeah and they failed okay. yeah so, so because th- people this were really up or uncomfortable that anybody with glasses on could be recording them this says um its screen looks much better than any other VR headset. The field of view is much wider. The gesture control is much more natural. It got a heavy on my face after a while. Yeah. And that's it. Dead and arrival. Yep. And one of their big things is that Verge have, have, have been, because they brought up the whole thing you were saying, John, about like a lot of the things is like, how often are you looking at a 3D model of a body? Like, and they have a theory that it's a TV. And it's like, because that was, that was how they ended the keynote as well. They went, if you bought a home cinema system, it would cost you more than this. And it's like, yeah, but that's a communal experience. Like, Daniel, yeah. you have that life projector that you got quite cheap um, for yeah, less, than a, less than a normal Vive. Less than um, a tenth of the price for that full projector setup of yeah. this Vision Pro. And Which, obviously, we a can inch watch it. Projector. In, and, and we it's watch super it in cool a group. sit down with some friends and crack out some popcorn and drinks and watch yeah. something on a big screen. Yeah. Yeah, and it's alternatively, fun. we could buy. Ten thousand pounds worth of AR Apple headsets, and then all sit there with them on <laughs> and watch them and have the basic same experience. And what's for, funny for, for about that reason. is it's actually slightly more than ten thousand pounds. It's ten thousand five hundred we'd need yeah, for the same yeah. experience. So, like, like, and that's it. Do like, they sync up in any way, or do we just have to go um, now? I, I I don't think they mentioned that. However, they for the longest time on the iPhones and the iPads, they they've they've touted because you can do synced AR experiences where they are drawn in the same physical space on different mm-hmm. phones. So I, I I am fully expecting it to do that. I mean, they, there was a bit in the keynote where they had multiple people wearing them and they were mm-hmm. all walking around the same three D object. And I say like iPhones can currently do that, so I that's definitely something they'll be able to do. Okay, but, so just to confirm what we've said this episode so far, COVID not going to be a thing, Switch is going to yeah. be a failure, this Apple thing dead on arrival. All right, good. Let's add it to the list uh, of things yes. we've predicted. Doesn't have built-in add audio, it to the list. Which I find weird. What was that? Doesn't have any built-in audio. No, it does. Must have. Oh. Must have built-in no, it does. It, it does. It's got those, Um, you know, the, the, it's, it's got the headphones like the Oculus has where they don't actually come down. They're like above your ears and they fired sound down. Oh, okay. I like they were advertised, like they advertised very, a lot. Yeah. Of, they were like, "Oh, it can work with AirPods as well." If you want like private listening, they were like, "If you want noise cancelling, obviously put normal AirPods in; it'll noise cancel." Yeah, they've got they, to be they, not. Yeah, they've got to be not noise cancelling because the whole point is you've got to be able to engage with the space around you while you. Yeah, got these. but they, but they yeah. said you could use both. You can either use the built-in ones that kind of are completely open, or you can, if you want to be like they 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 showed it off on an airplane and putting noise cancelling headphones in and completely isolating yourself so it didn't sound like you're on the airplane and whatever. That that they showed that off, so you can do both. But again, it's like, oh, you want that? You're paying another uh, to add a three hundred pound pair of headphones mm-hmm. on top of what you're already paying, you know. And it's just, it's it's classic Apple to make something just so. I mean, 
there was this the reason i keep bringing it back to the airpods max is because when the airpods max released right they came out I, I, you remember daniel right because a while ago we were trying to find a good pair of over ear sort of um noise cancelling headphones for rebecca yeah and i just went on amazon and i bought all of them <laughs> i just got all of them delivered and i went okay we're gonna try all of them and we're gonna send the rest back um and we went through loads of them but all of them were like 200 pounds ish right they were all even the high-end ones they were all about 200 pounds yeah. um that's how much those those things are. And Apple then came out a few years ago and went, hey, we're entering this market. Our offering is £500. And everyone went, but I can buy two of the other one for that yeah. price. And everyone was confused where they were entering the market because they made something that was like, if 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 you really want high-end professional headphones, you're going to be paying £1,000 for really fancy audio file grade headphones, right? If you want the convenience, why would you pay £500? Admittedly, the AirPods Max, like a year later, suddenly started to be sold for half price everywhere that wasn't Apple. That's why I got them, because you were able to get them for almost the price of the other ones. But the Vision Pro is, it's not, even if it's half price, it's still three three times the price of an index. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I don't... But it's not, it's not trying to be a VR headset. It's trying to be this own special new thing. Yeah, this mixed reality thing. They, 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 I think they want it to replace your phone. In the, mm. in the long run. I think they were like, yeah. this is how... Interesting. Does it have that functionality right now? I don't it, know. Well, is it like they enabled were, to, what they were to showing 3G, off 4G, 5G, whatever? Well, I don't know if it can do 3G, 4G, 5G, but what they were showing in the thing is that it has its own apps and that it like has it has a, a desktop processor and it can do all the desktop apps and it can run... You, know, you can do FaceTime calls and it, it, everything they showed off was like, hey, you can use this instead of your Mac or your iPhone. It yeah. wasn't like it, you can use them with them, as obviously, but everything they showed off was always this does it all on its own. Yeah, which yeah. is, and then but then uh, there becomes an argument, obviously, you know, e that even if the three and a half grand price, right? You know, if you were to buy, let's say, let's say you were to buy like that fucking MacBook, right? Uh, which similar specs, and then you bought like a really nice, a couple of really nice monitors, and you bought some really nice stuff. You'd probably be spending near that. I, maybe that's what they're banking on, that instead of people spending a bunch of money on a load of nice equipment, they'll just buy the one headset. But even then, I'm like, mm. Well, here's the thing, right? You're in a, a crowded city place. Mm. You want to check the time. Yeah. You get your phone out, you go, that's the time. You don't want to put a headset on, turn it on, calibrate, wait, loading, computer... Oh, that's well, isn't, the time. isn't the implication that you would always be wearing the glasses under that scenario? If well, it's no, because it's only got two hours of battery life. Ah, but, no, but that's the thing. They can sell you an Apple Watch for three hundred pounds to go with it. That you? Hang on. <laughs> could it be like you know your phone wear when it's in your pocket with its thing closed? It's you know it's not using its battery. Like you wear it all the time, and then you like you know you tap the side of your head and it wakes up really fast or something, and only then know. is well, it no, eating into its battery. Well, life well no, because, well no, because if it's off, you can't see anything. Oh. Okay, it is, right. It's it's video pass through that's apparently perfect. Apparently, it is like you are just not wearing the goggles, but it is video pass through. It's not yeah, like it needs it's not to be like, on for you to see. Yeah, yeah. Which, you're um, just looking at I feel like I'm going to struggle to. I I feel like I'd be not walking as smoothly and naturally as I. I feel like I'm going to fall over with them. I feel like, especially considering it's only just a little thing on the top. That's the most scalable piece of technology anyone's ever come up with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ever like you could just go yoink off the back of someone's head. Yeah, given there are yeah, and given there, blind, very famously cause... there have been instances of people just going around on mopeds to snatch a phone out of people's hands. This is a much bigger prize that's much easier to grab. Yeah, so it's not going to be replacing the phone. I think it's to be used in an office to do big screens as long as you don't have any friends. Plus, when we're talking about phones, obviously part of what Apple makes a fuck ton money off is they routinely ask people to upgrade their phones. You can't do mm. that if the price is that high. Even if you find some people willing to pay that much, are yeah, they going to no, pay that they much will every lower the price. year that, That's an opening price. That's a hundred percent. That price is going to come down, and they're going to they a hundred percent in two years going to release a Vision Air, and it's going to be like a thousand pounds or something. You know, yeah. which is still expensive, but it's obviously a, a whole different. But then you're in it. the same space as high end VR headsets. You're in a similar price point. Then you're well, they're, yeah, trying, but they're trying to they do what they did. Uh, with like tablets and stuff, is they they're going. This is actually not going to compete with laptops. This is a different market. Yeah, and yeah, they know what they're doing. I'm not going to say that Apple don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. What I am saying is that I know VR. I didn't know phones. I didn't know tablets. I know mm. VR. I know what's comfortable. And I know that that uncomfortableness and that nausea that you get very early on mm. because you'll have that even with video pass through. Yeah. 
you'll get you'll get that it's not one to it's not perfectly one to one so there will be nausea to it and that people are going to try it in the apple store and go no that made me feel sick and that's it you've lost that sale forever yeah people aren't going to come back that because people aren't yeah, going to be willing to put that effort in because why would that's they? the curiosity because as you said it's like everyone's keeps trying to make it a new product category right like i say meta have been doing that for fucking ages yeah. and i just you know, Apple have repeatedly shown because when they announced the fucking iPad, I was I was laughing at it because I'm like, it's just a big iPhone. It can't do anything different. It's just a bigger screen. Yeah. Why would I want that? And obviously, at this point now, basically, Apple make the only tablets people want. That's not There's true. a reason they control ninety five percent of the market. No, I no, love a... my little cheapy Android tablet that I read. No, I know. But there are lots of Android no, tablets that are perfectly. No, there's successful. a lot of Android tablets, but there's a reason iPads are like ninety percent of the entire tablet market. Like it's not, it it's just it's iPads. Like because iPhones, obviously, there's like iPhones are maybe fifty percent of the market of phones, but iPads are just dominating that space. Same with Apple Watches, right? Like in the smartwatch space, it's all fucking Apple Watches. It's like ninety percent fucking Apple Watches, and. I don't know if that's what they're hoping to do with fucking VR. I don't know if they'll make the experience just so good and specific that people will only want that one. But I just... It's not like a watch. Like, a watch people understand what a watch is. Right? Like, people wear a fucking watch. The OE you can use it for health tracking. Oh, a tablet. What can you do with the tablet? It's a drawing tablet now. Oh, people like drawing tablets. By 20... In quarter two, 2022, Android made up 49% of the tablet market. Apple, 38. Yeah, I did not believe oh. that 10% number. That sounded like bullshit to me. Windows, 11. <laughs> Windows 11? 11%. Ah. So, Android, there's a lot more because Androids are cheaper and b- better for what people want from a tablet. And if people mm. have already got and- if people are already using Android, you know, compatible systems on other devices, they're going to want their tablet to work nicely with it. Yeah. Well, then that, you're my, naturally going to... Where's you, that you're, from? You're, you're intuitively going to skew towards a, a similar compatible operating system for your phone and your tablets. Have a look who has the largest smartwatch share. It's definitely Apple. Uh, for that Apple forty three percent. Okay, where the so, fuck did I get that fa- figure from? You're you just wanker. made it up. You're, you're the exact no, I, reason I, no, I, I don't want to get a fucking MacBook Air because I no, don't. I've read it somewhere. I just want a nice thing to write on, but that fucking Windows is a piece of shit. And Linux, is a piece of shit. I love it on my Steam Deck, but dear fucking god, you have to fight it all the time. As as much as as much as Apple is a dick a lot of the time, their stuff is. Well built the and problem works. with Apple, right? Because Apple were always the ludicrously expensive twat option. Yes. Right? Yeah. They were always ludicrously expensive. This is for people who don't understand that you can get something a lot better for cheaper, but this is the fashionable one. And then, in recent years, they've invented their stupid Apple Silicon, which is fucking incredible technology. Don't and it started to really blow stuff out the fucking water. And I'm just looking at it going, ah, oh, you, you, fuck you. God, have you, you, got, God, have you seen that? Fucking... I still don't get this new tech. Like, you know, you, you at, the, at the dawn of the iPod and the iPhone and the mm. iPad, I get what they were doing and I get why it would be usable and exactly what the use case is and how it might fit into people's day-to-day lives on an ongoing basis. I do not understand this, where it's supposed to fit into people's lives. No, I or, agree. I think, it's, I think, you know, previously they found a thing they wanted to do and then they came up with the technology to make it happen. I think on this case, they've come up with the technology first and now they're desperately trying to come up with use cases to sell it, well, which so, is exactly so, what Facebook has done with Meta. They came up the with the Apple technology Watch. first and they Sorry. can't figure out how to fit it into people's lives. You need lives. to put that in the past tense because Meta's been shut down. The, the, yeah. meta, meta, the Metaverse stuff is gone. And this was like Apple's attempt to do that metal, Metaverse stuff. Yeah. Uh, There's a weird... So when, yeah. when they announced the Apple Watch, right, and I bring this up because they announced the Apple Watch and they went, hey, you need an Apple Watch. And everyone was like, why? <laughs> like, I have a watch. If you have a watch, you have a watch. It tells the time. Why do you need it to do anything else? Um, and they kept trying to kind of create this product category. And then for years, they were kind of giving it to developers and developers made loads of apps for the Apple Watch. But what ended up happening after about five years is all the Apple Watch apps just started disappearing. Loads of apps that were on the Apple Watch feeds just kind of went away because no one was fucking using them. And now every year they, they come out and they're like, well, we added the Apple Watch. They've added, they're like, oh, we've, we've added a Snoopy watch face. And everyone's like, okay, what else? And they're like, eh. <laughs> and it's just, they fail to create, a, like, it's obviously a product category that exists. I fucking have one because I use it for health tracking. But like, that's a kind of thing they tried and it died almost. And I wonder if that'll happen with the Vision Pro. They're going to try and create the same thing and it's just going to kind of peter out a bit. But uh, uh, it's it's really interesting, just because obviously every time Apple does something like this, it is 
a big industry thing. Yeah, but the thing is, right, smartwatches didn't really take off. But that's my point. And that's my, it's exactly my point. I, I had a smartwatch. I, I got it for free with my phone, and I used it for a little bit, and I went, I hate this. What's the point of putting this fucking stupid thing on my thing? Yeah. Because it takes two seconds to get my phone out of my pocket. Yeah. yeah. Much Check smaller, lighter health tracking watches seem to be... No, that's a big category. That's that is, fine. Yeah. yeah, smaller, but they were around before. Also, I quite, I quite enjoy that the state of stuff. just... Stuff that you wear on your meters. wrist when used to be everyone wore the thing that tells the time on their wrist. Then, like, watches significantly dropped off just because people all of a sudden had phones that told them what the time was, when that became a thing. And then watches kind of made a bit of a comeback in the health tracking industry. Yeah, but they were around before the smartwatch. Mm. They were kind of... Because everyone had, you know, you had pedometers and stuff, and it was like, well, let's put it around the wrist. Well, we could check blood pressure, you know, and, and doing that sort of stuff. Mm. And that was that was the thing that kicked out. And we're like, oh, integrate that because that's what they do is they just see all of the things and they glue it all in one package. Mm. That's kind of what they do. Um, but no, smart smart watches just don't really, I don't really see them having a, a kind of future stuff. Those fitness ones though are, are pretty good. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I got... but the thing is, if you've got a, if you go uh, to a nice gym, I go to a nice gym. It's all the tracking stuff gets done on the machinery. So fuck it. Well, I yeah. Like, I got a nice watch, but the reason I got one is because I wanted it to keep a, a, an eye on my fucking blood oxygen level because I had a blood clot like that. But I wouldn't yeah, have really bothered like otherwise. A good reason to get one. Yeah, like it, it tracks my health, it tracks my sleeping. Like there's I some uses see, for yeah, it. It's, it's, it's more... stopping you dying is good. I can see them pushing into the American market a lot more if they team up with like health insurance people. It's mm. like if you Ooh. wear your Apple Watch twenty four seven and track all this data, you get a discount on your health insurance. Mm. I mean, it's evil, but I can see it working. Yes. Yeah, that is like they, how I think they'll get. But, a lot but more this is the thing with the watch, right? The watch, like the watch. I put a watch on, and it's there. It's just a watch, right? I don't have to think about it. It's just on my wrist. I'm not. It, it's just there. It's unobtrusive. The VR head, that that, that fucking AR headset. You, it is the most distracting possible piece of technology you could ever use yeah the watch i can ignore i, I forget i'm wearing it i you i, I just don't <laughs> I, I it just I, I mean i my original vive broke it's broken i haven't gotten a new headset and it's just because they're so expensive and I'm, i use them very little and when i do i just heart and i'm like <laughs> yeah I want something yeah. comfortable that isn't going to be hard. That I, I, what Apple clearly wants to do is exactly what I would like, but it, it's going to be heavy and uncomfortable. It's going to last two hours, and I'm going to stop using it. I mean, yeah. the best the best addition I ever got for my VR headset was air conditioning in my office. Lol. Yes. <laughs> that was legitimately, that made it so much nicer to use. And that, air conditioning, was cheaper than the fucking... <laughs> Amazing. It was cheaper than the Vision Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amazing. including the headset. Add the headset and the air conditioning together. It's about the well, same. Actually, as the you Vision could get Pro. the headset. You could get air conditioning, and you could buy a computer to power the headset for less yeah. money than the Vision Pro. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just definitely do not buy this first version. Wait for a few iterations and see where they take. Ah, it. The is, no maybe it. like you know, a... buy the third one. It might be getting into something interesting. Yeah, if they do a lighter, thinner, svelter version, I'm sort of into it. But, but for what they're doing for, like, I I don't mind that the thingy's heavy because I only really want to play it for two hours because I'm, you know, jumping around and being a fucking loon in VR. Mm. But when it comes to they're like, this is productive software. I'm like, I'm not only productive for two hours a day. I know I've got ADHD. Yeah. But like, you know, I'm, I'm not, this aren't my like two productive hours. At one point they revealed they've got a, a virtual floating keyboard you can use. Fuck whoever decided to be bother coding that. That's no, there's no point that that would be one I mean, of the worst no, that, things. That's, that, I'm assuming that was done by the same person who put a QWERTY keyboard on the new Apple Watches. Hilarious. Jesus. <laughs> it's a full QWERTY. Yeah. You know what? Never mind. Yeah, Yeah, you can type with a full QWERTY keyboard on the fucking watch. And weirdly, it's actually not as bad as it seems, but it's ridiculous. It definitely but, will be bad, though. There's no... No, it's bad. It's not as bad as you'd think, but it's I've, still I've bad. never done this, but my mind immediately goes to the Simpsons and the fingers you have dulled with are too fat. <laughs> to obtain a, To obtain an Apple QWERTY di- dialing wand, mash well, the I key, always, mash I your always think with that, your palm now. You know that I'm Peter sure Serafinowicz sketch where he makes the Mac teeny and it's just a Mac with a single button and like, I press, press the key 23 times to type a U. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's the, always what the, I think. The 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 uh, the onion one with the Mac wheel on the the laptop Mac. Mm. We had to spin the wheel to turn yes. the letter. It's peak That's Apple, right? Basically, but like it... uh, yeah, Apple got irritating recently because their their actual processing power uh, of their devices is starting to get leagues above other people. No, th- them taking that in house, right? Because I think I mentioned to you, I have I have a Macbook, I have a little MacBook that I got in twenty fourteen. 
And that was, it's so thin, it's, there's nothing to it, there's no fan, right? And it's clearly, Apple clearly designed this thing and went, this is this wonderful tiny little laptop, right? And then clearly went, and people think this is why that laptop is why they started developing their own silicon. Because then they put this Intel chip in, in it and went, oh my God, it's so shit because of this chip and we can't do anything better. Yeah. And they were going, we can't make what we want because we don't have the chips for it. And then they started doing them and it's like, oh my God, they're amazing. Um, you know, the, the fact that like this laptop, I do all the editing on now, this outperforms. This, this laptop easily outperforms in rendering tasks a full like 3090 my computer, desktop yeah. computer. Yeah, Thrash which is insane. Computer. Because the, cause the, the laptop I've got is half the price of your computer yeah. and is a laptop <laughs> that I can That's, take with me. That was, that was the thing. Like Apple used to be the, we're very expensive fuck you, sort of, mm. you know, it's fashionable, it's cool, you've got an iPhone, we. Um, but now they're getting to the point where they're like, actually, we're, we're the cheaper alternative. Yeah, it's a bit of a value proposition to some of it now, admittedly. Yeah, and that's why, we, that's why the, the fucking MacBook Air caught my eye, and I'm like, oh, God, I like the idea. We were joking, right, because they also announced, impressive. they also announced an Apple Silicon Mac Pro, which yeah, is that just... Thing's got, it's got 129 gigs of fucking... RAM, GPU and regular RAM glued together or something. It, it's, it ridiculous. is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, if you go on the Apple site, right, let's, let's back out. It, it's an M2 Ultra with a 24-core CPU, 76-core GPU, and 32-core neural engine processor for, for AI, 192 gigs of unified memory, which includes VRAM, because it's all one, 8 terabyte SSD, and uh, it's, it, it's... How much is that tower? That is £12,000. <laughs> yeah. That's but like... then... You could but this is the thing. We've bought really high-end computers for like similar prices to that. Yeah. Which so I look at that. I'm actually like, that's actually not that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in the past when you were specking out a computer, you'd spec it out with the exact same chip you'd put on a PC, and it'd be three times the price. You'd be like, what the fuck am I paying for? I mean, the other thing that's really uh, helping Apple is that graphics cards, especially graphics cards, have become so ludicrously fucking expensive. Oh yeah. And. Uh, in the case of the 4060, so ludicrously shit. Oh, yeah. The 4060 is a, a, a fucking awful bit of kit for a huge fucking price for how much you're getting out of it. How much is it? I don't know. If it's if it's more than free, they're ripping you off. Well, it's it, grand or something. It, out, it barely outperforms like fucking... I think it doesn't outperform the 2080. It's $300. Yeah, it's a piece of fuck because it's their really cheap one, but it is a it oh, is okay. a piece that's of fuck. That's lawless, I thought. But the price of like the the forty eighty and that's just lunacy. I can't remember. It's it's a lot. Well, because we we bought thirty nineties because we were like these are going to last forever, right? No, I went. I want a thirty ninety because I I want to do high intensity things like making games. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like we bought them yeah. with the idea that they will last a long time because they're so high end that they will be able to keep them for ages. Yeah, um, yeah. We only and they brought the forty, and, and we bought that, and went, "Oh my god, it's the most expensive graphics card that's ever existed. Why is this so expensive?" And they're huge. Daniel had to put, put his PC in a new fucking case because the graphics card wouldn't fit in the old one. Yeah. Amazing, hilarious. And then they announced the forty ninety, which is bigger and almost fifty percent more expensive than the thirty ninety. Yeah, <laughs> it's one thousand five hundred eighty pounds. It's just a graphics card. We're talking about the Vision Pro being fucking three and a half grand. Fucking Nvidia charging one thousand five hundred for a single component. Oh yeah, but when you're building a gaming PC, like very often the GPU is the single most expensive component. That's not surprising. Yeah, but yeah. then you're gonna have to spend another fucking grand on a decent CPU to go with yes. it. Yes, true. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, probably three, four grand for a, a really top end gaming PC. Absolutely. Yeah, but as, and then. as we've established though, that. Graphics card isn't actually... I mean, they announced Cyberpunk with the full ray tracing mode, so you know how shadows don't draw in in Cyberpunk until you're next to them. Wow, yeah. with full ray tracing, they do. Low bar. Um, but they were showing it on a 4090, and they were like, look, with all the ray tracing on, on a 4090 with DLSS on performance mode, you can get 30. And I'm like, wow, 30? <laughs> For a grand and a half? 30? Yeah. Oof. The bit that I don't understand with, 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 with Apples, though, is why, when they're doing all this stuff, is are they not at any point just saying, hey, now that, you know, gaming is a bigger space than music and movies combined, why are we not, you know, focusing on making our machines being accessible well, they, gaming they machines? Did do, I, they did do a gaming section of the Mac bit. They kind of went, hey, we're adding a game mode like Windows has that, you know, lowers the latency on your, you know, PlayStation 5 controller or your Xbox controller and... Oh, it turns all the background processes off and it really improves performance of the game and yada, yada, yada. Um, 
And then they were like, hey, we've, we're trying to get more game developers to make stuff for Apple Silicon because the Apple Metal, is their like, DirectX version, is really good. And then they brought Kojima out and Kojima was like, I'm going to port all my games to the Mac. And they're clearly sure, trying that, that's, a bit. That's significantly below the absolute bare fucking minimum. Like, no, if they I want agree. Their, a large number of people are not going to buy a machine unless, one, it does the worky stuff they want it to do, and two, it plays the games they want to play. Well, like, look, this absolute is, this is... bare fucking minimum for a large number of people. Like, I will never buy an Apple machine because I want to play new games when they come out. Yeah, well, yeah. one of the biggest problems with the Apple machines as well is that, like, for the longest time, we, you were able to load the games on the Mac, right? And then they went, hey, I want to say like seven years ago or something, they were like, hey, we're dropping support for 32-bit in the next update. Then you updated, and then suddenly every old 32-bit game just stopped working. Yeah. And all these games, obviously, you know, developers aren't updating their games to 64-bit after seven years. Like, stacking didn't get updated. Well, why would Double Fine aren't going to go back to stacking to make a 64-bit version after fucking 10 years, are they? Um, yeah. No, functionally, so, you've just taken a ridiculously large amount of gaming history and made it abandonware on that yeah, platform. Yeah, for the Mac. And then, so you're doing that for ages, and then they moved to Apple Silicon, and then they went, okay, most of those games that were previously on the Mac don't run anymore either and then it just makes this con there's the constant if, you know, if you're an ios strange, developer the dose, hilariously dumb thing that they're not fixing like it's just i like well, i look got, at it they, i can't they, understand how you wouldn't like put that at the top of your to-do list because, ahead no, of no, no. A, let's charge three and a half grand for some dumb <laughs> goggles nobody's going to buy it's because oh people are gonna buy them um okay some <clears> idiots <throat> are gonna buy it's because apple <clears throat> excuse me want consistency across all of their things mm. so if you're on the iphone if you're on the fucking Vision Pro bullshit, if you got a back, all of those, they want the consistency. So if there is a game for one of those, it's got to work on all of those. Mm -hmm. And so that means they scale everything down to the Apple Arcade mm. and the mobile phone. So basically mm. anything above a mobile phone level game, they don't give mm. a shit about. That's not what they're they for. Wait. But this is the frustrating thing. They occasionally try, but it's always lip service. Like getting Kojima out to be like, oh, they're putting De Death Stranding to the Jesus Mac. Christ, like, who is excited to play Death Stranding now? <laughs> Jesus that's the Christ. Point. How, how long, when did that come out? Has it been five it's, years? But, but this is the so thing. Apple, they, 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 they pay oh, it like a lip service. Like they, it's like there's like a couple of guys at Apple occasionally like raising their hands and being like, hey, we should do something about this. And they go, all right, Jim, we'll add a bit for Jim. <laughs> yeah. But okay, they only seem... four years. Okay, it's only taken four years for people I mean, I open... to be able to play Death Stranding. If I open the App Store, Jesus right? The Apple. The, if I open the App Store on the Mac and I go into Play, which is where the games live, uh, what's what's at the top here? You've got uh, games we love. Asphalt Nine is the top one. Uh, great iPhone Nine. And I... No. Yeah. Uh, how do you have nine games? I've not even heard of any of them. No, ridiculous. Great iPhone and iPad games that work with Mac on Apple Silicon. It's just a lot of... Um, I mean, it's like, oh, GTA Vice City, the, the mobile version. And then uh, for like... No, the new and one. Then for, the yeah, remake. and then for normal games... Uh, top paid The top paid game for the Mac on the Mac App Store is The Sims 2. <laughs> Wow. Notably. The Sims 2 Complete Collection. Then it's Resident Evil Village, which apparently got a very good Mac port. Psychonauts yeah, but 2. But again, there's like literally been a different Resident Evil come out in the meantime. Yeah. Which we should talk about because it's really fucking good. I've not played it. I'm pl I'm I was talking about Tears of the either. Fucking Kingdom. I want to talk about oh, yeah, The Crew 3. The Crew 3? Yeah, they the announced The Crew 3 ages ago. And I did they? Clock it. Yeah, right. It's not called The Crew 3. It's called The Crew something else, right? What's the best bit about The Crew? Going on a road trip with friends. Going on a road trip with friends. What have they taken out of the Crew 3? Oh, Jesus oh God, Christ. The no, point? they can't have done. You're joking. It's set on one island. Like oh, one little high tits. tropical island. Oh, they're doing but a test island. The Crew 2 was set in the whole of the USA. So we the proved crew one. it. Yes. But, God. No. But, God. But, no, God. You're ju you can't. No, you must be wrong. You've made a mistake. No. I would have hoped they'd be like, right. all of Europe. No, now, no, no developer could be that dumb. God. It's impossible for a team of humans to be that stupid. God. Like, they would not be able to make it to their office. They'd, like, walk out into the road without <laughs> looking and be run over before they made it to their PCs to make that bad a decision. Ubisoft's official website, the newest is... Oh, Ubisoft, is, okay, fine. In the Crew yeah, franchise, yeah. it's called yeah, the Crew sense. Moto Fest. Moto Fest. <laughs> the Crew Moto Fest lets you fulfill the driving bucket list of your dreams on a beautiful Hawaiian open world. Right. So what they've they've made like a fake Hawaiian island the size of the but, USA? But no. but again, Test Drive Unlimited Two One does already exist. Like I can just go and play that if I want to drive around a one to one Hawaii. 
Yeah. So. But like, but okay. <laughs> here's the thing. Like, here, here's the games I might want to play on 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 a, on a typical week. I might want to play mm. some older games that are just old favourites of mine, and I might want to mm. play some Elden Ring. And I'm pretty mm. sure I can't do any of that on an Apple PC right now. Okay, so here's the thing. I've opened Old up Steam, games, right? no, fuck you. New games, no, fuck you. I've I can't opened up play Steam. Civ 6. They've got Civ 6. Yeah. Great. I can play one game I want to play on an Apple PC. Well, it, there's two... It always and I'm aggressively the saying Apple PC because I'm pretty sure that's technically wrong and I know it's annoying someone. But before they moved <laughs> to Apple Silicon... That's really pissed off someone down there. Someone who's listening before, is really fucking angry at me. Before you moved to Apple Silicon, right, you were able to obviously just install Windows as a dual boot and just boot into Windows. Um, and just play stuff on there, but you can't do that anymore, obviously, with Apple Silicon. Windows 11's fucking uh, ARM version shit. Um, like, I have opened Steam. I've got 1,716 games on Steam. How many do you think work on a current Mac? 312. I'm going to say lower than that. I'm going to say 240. You know what's amazing? Daniel was incredibly close. It's actually 321. Oh! Yeah. But it's like, it's Aerofly FS2, AI basically, Dungeons. Basically, there. what I did was I went, how many of those would work on uh, Linux on my Steam Deck and then yeah. reduce it by like 100? Yeah, Amazing. you know, Brutal Legends here, Bro Force, Button City, fucking Call of Duty Black Ops 3 for some reason. Uh, but mostly Democracy very simple 3. games. Yeah, City Skyline, Disco Elysium, Dirt 4. Uh, it's, it's just a lot of like occasional bits like if you were on a mac you could play some games but if you wanted to play games you wouldn't get a mac obviously yeah like you, you have a mac feels, like, oh, this just feels insane to me that like well, this is not that. fixing this is not the first thing you do when you make computers and people yeah. playing video games on computers is one of the primary things they use their computer for and is the biggest entertainment industry on the planet. Ah, well, one of the things like, that did it feels, apparently... I, I don't understand how people are not being fired on a day-to-day -day basis the until things, they fix this. One of the things they announced during it, is they partnered with Unity, they said. They, they partnered for, for the AR thing, but also for, for the Mac. And we're like, hey, we've changed our development tools so that you can port a game to Apple Silicon in days, not months. So in theory... People who want to port their games to the Mac, who make a PC version, but they should be able to. to. You should just be able to play it. No, Jesus. but I appreciate. Obviously, if you're making a game for an x86 system, you can't make it work on an ARM system without a bit of a f change. You ha like just technologically, it's a completely different architecture. Um, Put it in words I can understand, Professor. Well, the <laughs> fucking, English. The, damn it. Do you, do, you, do you remember how when the God PS4 damn it, the Professor? Xbox, not all of us speak this science gobbledygook. When the PS4 and the Xbox. Uh, one announced and they were like hey they're x86 based now and everyone went oh that's good because PC ports are going to be way easier because you don't have to completely change the underlying architecture to port your game to the system um, whereas Apple Silicon is running on ARM which is what like phones run on which is just the under it, you know how like x86 is like based on DOS right yeah and no but carry on it, they, 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 literally in ARM English based, professor ARM based systems are literally com working in a completely different way from the bare metal. Like, they are completely different. Which is why, when Apple were like, hey, we're moving to Apple Silicon, they had to make this big deal of going, hey, we've built all these translation layers, and we've built all of these systems so that you can still use applications from x86. It's going through this complicated... It's a mess, and I think it's worth it for the performance you're getting, but, yeah, it's a problem constantly, because, yeah, for gaming, it's just shockingly bad. <laughs> You know, most of these games that I'm listing on Steam, they're, they're being translated from x86 versions, so they're not going to run great. There's very few games that are built for Apple Silicon, like Resident Evil 8 is. Well, I mean, there is a Death reason for that. We, we bumped into this when we did the little mobile game, is you can't submit anything on PC to go to Max. Even if you test it, you have to submit it through a Apple product. Mm. You need to own Apple hardware to be able to... Yeah send that off which means you need to be running basically if you're making a big game mm. you've got to be running a lot of apple hardware there's a reason right that there's a reason the the the, the, the prediction that the, the mac mini the cheapest mac you can buy that's just a small little box the joke forever has always just been that only exists for developers who just need to get a mac for yeah. like base ios development because it is the cheapest one you can buy no yeah. frills doesn't come with a keyboard and mouse it's just a tiny little box <laughs> um, but surely any time they did any form of consumer research and, like, they ask people to, like, you know, 
as, as you might do in like a survey, ask people to rank, how important is this, that, or the other in your purchasing decision for mm. what device, you know, as a desktop system you might buy next? The ability to play video games has got to always rank massively higher than I want to be able to have a consistent experience on every app between my PC and my tablet and my phone. Yeah, I, would say, though, though, think. I would say that the sort of people who they sell things to, people who play phones, don't understand what good video games are. I mean, do you think there's more money in trying to create a entirely walled-off garden where you lock people into always buying your products on desktop and tablet and phone? That can't be worth more money to them than suddenly getting access to a huge number of people who will never buy the product because they want to play brand new games when they come out. But the it adds the scale of the gaming industry. That cannot be worth it to them. It adds a consistency. If they know what software is going in and out, they are. it's easier to fix problems. It's easier I mean, to go, oh, look. The thing is, we can criticise Apple's business decisions all we want, but like they are the biggest company on the planet. So yeah. they must be doing something, right? <laughs> um, you know, and I... Uh, because whenever I've bought Macs, for, for, there's a reason I've always had a fucking PC as well as a Mac. Because I like using the Mac for most things. But then I'm like, I want to play video games and I can't do that on this. Yeah. I've always had to have another system and I've always hated having another system. Because it's just a faff having another entire computer for one specific use. Like, yes, I should. This laptop I have has the technical capability to play all the games. Like... They could work. It has the power. I just can't. So I, then I have to spend a lot of money on another thing, which is annoying. And most people so, can't do that. Just to put this into context, Apple are the seventh largest uh, company. Why are you revenue. just spreading all of this Apple propaganda today, man? Why are you coming out and being like, Apple, biggest company in the world, 90% of all tablets belong to Apple. They uh, were the largest my, company in the world. Apple the actually saved tri- my mum. Uh, like, you know, she was going to hit by a train, but they pushed her out of the way. Thank you, Apple. They we love the fir- you, they Apple. The fir- they the what the fuck is up with you, Matt? They were the first company to hit a billion What's this propaganda? You're thinking of the uh, market cap? Oh, that's Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. I don't know why you're thinking of market cap. No one thinks of that. But I was I was doing by revenue. Okay, yeah, fair. To see which is the big... Number one's Walmart, by the way. Yeah, Walmart, yeah. then Saudi... Armaco, which I'm assuming is oil. Nope. Then State, Amazon. State Grid Corporation of China, China National Petroleum Corporation, China mm-hmm. Petrochemical Corporation, Saudi Armaco, and then Apple. Yeah, and ExxonMobil. It's a lot of oil companies, Walmart, Amazon, and Apple. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. But either way, like I there any more made like, up fake Apple facts you'd like to share with us? Well, Matt? no. There's a thing. There's a thing that Rebecca always says, right? Because every time I have a conversation with Rebecca, they're like, "Why would I buy something if I can't play games on it?" Yeah, like it doesn't matter yeah. how good a Mac great. is. Completely What's great. The point. I mean, I would. I, this this is why I liked my Chromebook because I couldn't play games on it, and it meant I could focus. Yeah. <laughs> so them not playing games is actually a selling point for me. Yeah. I mean, I have that a bit because yeah, the, the the laptop is the one I use for work. Like that's what I'm using to do everything that isn't just you know fucking off basically. Yeah. Um, which is nice, and it's focusing. But again, you just have to have multiple fucking devices. Like, years and years and years ago, when I when I only had one computer, I used to have a Mac, like a 15-inch MacBook, but I had Windows on it as well, so it could do everything. But if I was in that same position now, I probably wouldn't have a Mac because I couldn't do everything with it like I could then. Yeah. I'd probably buy a fucking Windows PC, as much as I hate Windows. <laughs> Windows is just getting slowly so awful. Just just now it's always been awful. Oh so, no, but it, it's just every update is just takes more and more control away from you. And then there's people over at Linux going, "Join us!" I'm like, "No, I don't want that much control." Yeah, they're like, "Hey, what do, can you? What do you want to not run any app?" And I'm like, "Well, no. you know what I want, right? I want what the human body gives me, right? Yeah. I want to go. Oh, I'm in a situation where I need to breathe manually now. I'm going to breathe manually, but mm. most of the time, I'd like you to do that automatically for me. Yeah. You know, and there's people that always go, well, why don't you just want to breathe manually all the time every day? And then they just drop dead because they forgot to make their heartbeat. <laughs> and that's just too much for me. And then there's like Mac and they just can't breathe unless Apple let them. And mm. I like that middle ground, but it's just slowly shifting the Apple way. And it's just like... yeah, the, the, the Macs have more control, but like, fuck it on Windows. God, Windows 11 was like, hello, what if you didn't have seconds on your clock? And I'm like, but I want seconds on my clock. And it's like, you can't anymore. And I'm like, I well, can't. Windows was like, what if you didn't have the fucking date on any of your clocks? Yeah. And then in the last fucking big Windows 11 update, they were like, you can enable seconds on your system clock. And I'm like, wow. 
<laughs> ah, you absolute flipping sucker, because I'm just sitting here on Windows 10 with a little, hey, your Windows up, the 11, Windows 11 free updates waiting for you anytime you want it, just sitting down there at the bottom right, and I'm saying, fuck you, I don't care. Yeah, but so DirectX 12, loser. John. DirectX 12 is the shit. I, DirectX 12 is wonderful. I don't care. About I mean, the only reason fucking Flight Simulator runs, like, with any reasonable degree <laughs> is because of fucking DirectX 12. Like, it's a low bar, admit, but it's... it's. Hey, yeah. let's talk about something that isn't Apple. Let's talk about uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, go on. What You've got many thoughts. Well, I finished it. Yeah. Eighty hours. Start to finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what hu- hugely loved by everyone. Everyone agrees. Ten out of ten, best game video game ever made. I'm glad you agree. It's All right, moving really, straight on to really solid seven or eight. I agree. Yeah, it's have, it's you, in that have you played it, Matt? Yeah. How much have you played? Fine. Okay, I, I just kind of start playing it, and you know the big thing, and Daniel will agree with me here, is there's just so much fucking talking, and I don't care. Oh, I skip the cutscenes. No, I kept trying to. I'm like, oh, it's like, you know, oh, I get out of the thing. It's like, okay, please walk over there to a guy. And then I spent five minutes just walking over to a guy. And the guy's like, oh, for like five minutes. And then like, okay, walk back to where you were. So, and like, walk back to where you were and <laughs> talk to another depression. guy. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I'm just funnying on for ages. So, and I, you're, you're a bullshit person to me if you skip the cutscenes. I never dare skip a cutscene video game because I know oh, it's just going to happen. Right. You know, the cutscene's going to start and I'm just walking into a village. Going, oh, hello, Lila. Lovely to see you. I'm going to press start and the village is going to be on see, fire and everyone's going to be dead. John, John. Oh, shit, who killed Lila? Fuck, does you. anyone see who did this? I could be sitting there going, this story is shit. But I'm like, I'm going to watch it because I have to. Like, first playthrough, i got to watch that fucking story. But, right, with the with the Zelda thing, they have to explain... You get, like, a little follower for each of the main four dungeons that you do. And you have to explain to them, with cutscenes, every single thing. Every single fucking plot point has to be explained to them all individually. So the amount of conversations that you have when you finish all, you're going into a dungeon, you have these same fucking talking bits. I'm just like, no, I've seen this. You're just going to yeah. show me the flashback of like how the, that character was slightly involved in the thing that I don't give a fuck about. Yeah. It's really, it just, it's got so many bits where I'm like, just stop. And the, the amount of fucking going down to the shrine. Low, it's a cutscene. It's a cutscene. Cut We're arriving cutscene. Talking to you cutscene. You finish the shrine. Oh, skippable di- cut, dialogue. dialogue cutscene as you go back out. And I'm like, just stop. Just stop all of this shit, right? Just please, just for the love of fucking God. Like, and I know this game could do stuff, because you could, like, fucking die from the highest heights into the fucking lowest lows, and if you go super quick, you can cause a bit of a stutter. But, like, it's fucking loads really quickly. I don't know why you're fucking on... Like, technologically, it's a fucking incredible piece of work. It's a, it's, yeah? it's a, it's a technological marvel. It, re- it truly is. The fact that thing's running on a Switch, it's just... It makes so many game releases look just embarrassing. Maybe it one day truly... they'll improve Scarlet and Violet. What's I've, I've tried Scarlet and Violet so many times. And I'm like, this is this is shit. Well, oh no, yeah, fuck you! Run. It's uh, it's exactly what I want a Pokemon game to be. Okay, oh, it's no. technically shit, but it's the what game, I want a Pokemon game to the be. The game might be good, but it is so shit. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna wait for some patches. Have they not patched it yet? They patched it once, and the frame rate didn't improve. Great, yeah. of course they fucking did. And they patched it again. They're like, now you can trade Pokemon with a thing you don't use. I'm like, oh, I cool. love Game Freak. Get great. <laughs> yeah. Whereas this is like, a t- like the fact they're on the same system is fucking baffling. Because you've got this massive open world. Because um, Legend of spoilers from this point on of Legend of Zelda, just, no, just little things. I'm not going to do plot or anything because it's shit. Um, oh, Zelda's doing this thing. Yeah, I, I worked it out. I worked out the entire plot from the second fucking cutscene. That's when you revealed enough information for me to go, oh, this. And then it just was that plot for 80 fucking hours. Mm. And the ending, absolutely fucking shit. Um, also, it's got. Fu- it like, it's like, oh, this is, this is further on. We're going to be doing. Oh. This is five something years in the future of the last time you get to see all the stuff. And I'm like seeing the old map and how it's changed and all that. But where's the fucking big robot beasts? Where did the... You build them yourself now. You build your own fucking big no, robots. Where did the dungeons go from the last game, right? You've got these massive fucking huge things that helped you out in the last game. Here's the thing. If you've got an opening cutscene where a big bad starts destroying stuff, have them destroy those. Blow those up so you could go, hey, you know those things in the last game that helped you defeat Ganon? This is this Ganon's so cool, he can blow them up remotely. You're really fucked. No, they're just not that. Oh. Uh, that annoys me. That annoys me that just, there's not even a hint of them. Like, I understand that they would have taken all the Guardians apart and built things with them. That makes sense. But the massive fucking stomping robots of death 
that were everywhere, and they're just like, yeah, they, they're gone. But yeah, maybe they I are can accept there. that as just a gameplay necessity in the same way that, like, there's no reason, even though Majora's Mask follows directly on Frogger of Time, well, why has Link not got all of his upgrades and all his health and all his magic meter oh, and no, all the equipment he had no that, time, John. And he just mysteriously didn't have it with him that John, day. It's like, you know what? I'm fine with that. They explain all that. In this and game. that's not even five years. That was like straight afterwards. Like Link yeah. literally went from the end of Ocarina of Time to go find Navi Majora's Mask and on, and on the way decided to just shrug off 80% of his health bar and leave it at home. Oh, literally, you start the game with like the super maximum peak health and like the Master Sword and everything and then you oh, lose it all fun. when, uh, when Og- and Ogan turns up. I'm gonna. Miss, I, I've not played so there's this a yet. Slot. And there's I, a slot I've been, I've been, where been putting my, I've been putting it off because I'm scared of it. Because everyone keeps putting on Twitter like incre- like you know three part fucking robot wars creations yeah. that's a mech that can fly and you know and also like wanks gold at the enemies in order to make them die and I don't know I'm gonna good I'm gonna be like I'm gonna build a wheelbarrow and it's gonna explode and it's kill definitely me. got and less focus be than Breath of the Wild I'm just gonna be no, fucking no, embarrassed John, you won't because that building system is sorry everybody shite. And the reason it's shite is because the sheer amount of limitations put on it. Like, the, it's like you can attach 20 bits together, which is fucking great. Okay, 20 bits is fine. I like 20 bits. And you get the new bits by going to these gacha machines around the world and waiting for a cutscene to happen and then waiting for all of them to go and come out and then you can mm. pick them up. And I, I, the duplication bug, I use that a lot to get as many of those as possible because I just wanted the pieces. Uh, and then I leveled up my battery to max, which is something you can do twice. And then I got, uh, just by playing the game and exploring the game, because the exploration is second to none. It's fucking incredible. Got the outfit that meant that that lasted twice as long. So I basically had 32 full batteries and all the stuff I wanted to build. And I was like, shit, here we go. And I started building stuff. And every time I came up against a wall, every time there's a limitation, it's like, oh, no, you can't do that. No, that's not allowed. It's like you can fuse a spring onto your shield so you can bounce on your shield. Really fun idea. Do you know how many times you're allowed to bounce on your shield? I did it fucking twice. Three to no, five. One. You're allowed oh. one bounce on that shield. And then it's like, no, that's that, that's broken now. The, 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 the spring's gone. And that's, a, that's my problem with it. Is it's, it gives you all of these things. It's like, yeah, but play the game, though. It's, it gives you all these tools and then it limits you so fucking hard that I just... At one point, I was like, I literally just want to get to the end of this now. I just want to be done. I I hate my time with this game. This game is an incredible game and it's got so many things I hate about it. And it's so incredible. It still gets like a seven or eight, but it's got so much I hate. Like the arrows, every single time you want to fire an arrow and put something on it, you have to craft that arrow individually. And it's for a game about preparation, because you've got to, you know, you've got to, if you're going to go somewhere, you make all your food, you know, and you, you make sure you've got the right outfit. And especially if you're going into the underground bit, you've got to make sure you've got all of the, you know, special potions and the shit that you've made, elixirs to, with the Sunderline or whatever the fuck it was called, to go down there and you get, you know, you're getting, you're getting ready, but you don't, you can't prepare arrows. Like, I would have loved it if you had, like, uh, arrows on your back and you could craft, like, five or six. Hmm. Uh, at the start, and then you could increase that slightly as you went on in the game. And they were arrows, and that was the only arrows you had. You had to craft them at a fireplace. So you limit the player in that way, because that's limiting the player in the preparation way. And I don't mind limiting the player in the preparation way, which this game really seems to fucking like. But you have to literally, every time you get an arrow, arrow, pause the game with the menu, flick through 400 fucking objects, because it's in one, all of the items in the game, Food, materials, everything, the zone I think you build with, all of it in one bar that you have to scroll through the entire thing of to get the one thing that you want to equip to an arrow to have mm. fun in that particular second. And it's like, yeah, you could build these devices that do all this shit, but like, again, going in there with a big hammery sword thing is the easiest, best option that's fastest. I don't understand why you would want to do anything else. Mm. And it's just, it's endless shit like that. It's just so. Like, weapon degradation's fucking shit. And I hate that the weapon degradation's fucking shit. It's it's just shit. It's a big pile of shit, and I hate it. And the fuse makes it slightly more bearable, because things last slightly longer. But it also means that finding weapons becomes useless. By the time you've killed quite a few of the high-level bad guys, any shit stick you equip a thing to, you've got a pretty decent weapon. And if you've, got, you've stocked up on the things, then you basically stocked up on infinite weapons. And so I'm like, why are these breaking? Like, it's... I'm not... They're just kind of like... It just feels like ammo more than like 
You know, when he opens a chest, da, 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 oh, it's a one-use rock, or it's a weapon that's going to break. Well, like, it's the no... same problem that Breath of the Wild had, wasn't it? And that it was just this constant... I know they want you to keep changing things. I understand the game mechanic of they want you to keep trying different I things, and I understand don't. that, but... I don't, because I play through Elden Ring, and I try so many different weapons and so many different builds as I'm playing, because they made the combat fun. It, combat is not fun in Tears of the Kingdom. You've got, like, the one slash... You've got the slash with the light weapon and the heavy slash. And that's it. All the weapons of the game... Oh, I'm sorry. Spear stab. All the weapons of the game go in those three. I cannot oh. think of a weapon that falls outside of those three. Jab, slash, big stab. I think it's a bit unfair to, to criticise a game because it doesn't have the combat depth of a, you know, a Souls game. But well, okay. Well, that is that entire game's entire well, yeah. thing. But when you introduce an and entire And also, to compare mechanic... any game directly to Elder Ring, say, well, it's not as good as Elder Ring, so fuck it, 7 out of 10. But no, what I'm saying is specifically, unfair. there are open unfair. world games where you will explore a dungeon and you will be rewarded with a weapon. The weapon in Elder Ring means a lot more because that is a weapon I can then look at and go, oh. Oh, if I level this thing up, I could use this. And it, it ties into the gameplay. Whereas this, I'm like, all right. It's like getting, like, three shotgun shells as a reward. It's like, all right, I'll put that on the peep. Mm. There's no... Or if I've, you know, if I've already got a full set of weapons, which I normally do, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll leave that there then. Yeah, These are very different games that don't really benefit from comparison. No, but I think they do benefit from comparison because they're both trying to get me to... It was, it was for Matt's point. It was they were both trying to get me to uh, try their different weapons out. That's what they were trying to do. It, that's what it was about. It's just trying, it's trying to make you do different tactics and different things. And with Elden Ring, which is combat focused, they yeah. like, well, why don't we just do different kinds of combat and kind of make interesting weapons and weapons with sort of negative effects and things that you have to deal with and all, you know, interesting ways like that. And in this, it's just like, well, it doesn't matter. They just smash. And so the... It just feels like one rewarded me as a player and one punished me as a player. And it felt like by the end of that game, it was just an abusive relationship of just let me do the thing I want to do. I just hmm. kept going. I just want to, I want to do the thing. Like I'm, I'm building a thing, right? I'm building this thing and it's fun. And I've built a thing and I've saved the blueprint of this thing, right? So I, it's, it's like 10 different parts. It's a car. I saved the blueprint onto the saving blueprint ability. Um, I now want to rebuild that it's later in the game i'm going to use that blueprint to rebuild the thing does it use the parts that you have saved up which you can have hundreds and hundreds of no it uses a limited resource mm. but what you can do is individually get all of those parts out and then go to the blueprint and it will then use those items that you've dropped down on the floor but then what's the point of having the blueprint option? Why don't I just build the thing manually every time? And it's stuff like that. I'm like, why have you done it this way? Why are you making me use this limited thing instead of using the thing that I actually have? Because using this limited thing to build a thing, which I already have. I've got hundreds of the fucking things. Why do I have to get everything out of the fucking menu every five minutes for you? It's just, this feels it, like a thing that will probably be patched at some point just as a small quality of life update. I don't think so. I genuinely just think it's this weird philosophy they got. They're like, well, it's convenient, and so convenient has to cost you. That's kind of the game is... The game has a real, like... In its mechanics, a real theme of decay. Like, all the weapons that you pick up are decayed because of the thing that's happened. And all of the... It's all decay, 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 decay. Everything's decay. The land's falling apart. Decay, decay. But the plot's like, hey, let's rebuild everything. I'm like, but that's what... That's, that's the antithesis of your theme. Why are we? Do why are you doing it that way round? I don't understand. I don't understand. That's my review of Tears of Kingdom. I don't understand. Right? It's, it's, it feels a bit like I, I know you didn't really get on with Breath of the Wild very much. But Breath of the Wild had a lot of problems, but those problems, in some ways, for the, because it didn't have a lot of deep complexity. Those problems weren't as highlighted as they yeah. are in Tears of the Kingdom. Whereas it, it was now, just, Breath of the Wild uh, bugged me because the first time I played it, I was like, I'm going to go off an adventure. And I was basically railroaded because of those shit shrines that were like, hey, you have to fight this guy forever. I'm like, but I don't have weapons. And it's like, well, fuck you, I guess. <laughs> and well, then, it's, you know, it's, you go it's sailing off faff, to a thing it? and it's all that shit. Like, I never found out. A... Breath of Wild, I was like, once I started playing it like as my Animal Crossing calm down game at the end of the day, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. And Tears of Kingdom, I played in the same way. It was my calm end of the day, sort of just like wind down sort of thing. But it just kept infuriating me to the point where I had to stop playing it at night because it was literally just keying me up before bed. <laughs> well, I watched you as you were playing it because you were kind of enjoying it and you start getting to a bit where you kind of just hit a bit of a wall yeah. with it. 
Because it, 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 what it does is those first, like, that first island is magical because it's giving you all of these new tools. And it's mm. like, look at these tools. Look at this shit we're giving you. Look at this big fucking tutorial. I really hate the opening, really slow walking scene. Fuck all that shit. That was awful. But when you get out in the island, it's great. And you're like, yeah. And the exploration, like I've said, that, that overworld and the, the dungeon-y stuff, the Sky Islands, it's all fucking great. Sky Islands actually were the weakest point, I think. They were just very yeah. repetitive. If you weren't, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to get a cross-shaped one that I've got a that has a catapult thing on it that takes you to a thing where there's a Korok seed and there's the vending machine over there. Uh, this is the shrine where I teleport. But to open that, I've got to go get the green thing and solve a really basic puzzle. Like, that kind of just felt very copy-paste, whereas the underground was the best bit. And then just seeing how Hyrule had changed was kind of fun as well. And the fact you started in the middle of the game, I felt was nice. A lot of nice stuff there. Really enjoyed that stuff. And that's what kept me going was that exploration of going, oh my goodness, I don't know what's coming next. But what annoyed me is that, like, the rewards at the end of all the exploration sessions, unless it was an outfit, were shit. Because nothing mm. lasts. And there's no... You know, that if it's going like, here's an opal, I'm like, oh, I don't care. I can equip that to a staff and it'll do lightning-y things. But, like, the easiest way is to get arrows with all the shock fruits that I have to zap people. Like, if I need to use an element thing, I'm going to do it via arrows. Because you've got two different ways, like, maybe even three different ways of getting those elements out. Even though that system's shit, it's the easiest, most convenient one. Why would I want a, a, a limited weapon when I can just have a really strong weapon and get that element attack through bows and arrows? And it's just, it's got, I don't know, it, it doesn't, it didn't jump. And, and the more I played it, because it really front loads its ideas. Like, within the first ten hours, you've seen everything mechanically that game can do. I don't think there's any mechanic that is after that tenet. I mean, the the, the the blueprint thing, you kind of kind of have to wander around to find a little bit. But everything else you've got, um, you know, within those 10 hours, you're like, oh, okay. Is that but partly mm. a function if you're saying you're using duplication bugs to just get parts way earlier than you should do? And actually, they should have been more spaced out over the game. No, I found the... Because I, I didn't want to duplicate money. And I didn't want to duplicate, like, weapons or anything. I just wanted to duplicate the thing that is just so I could build silly things. Mm. I, wasn't, I wasn't, like, I was not progressing with the things that I glitched into the game, right? I was just using an infinite amount of them because I was like, this is the fun bit. The building the besiege style weapons and stuff is the fun bit. And it I feels wanna... like the progression was supposed to be that you start off building smaller, modest things that you slowly add to as the game goes on, and you just skip to giving yourself and no. putting yourself into sandbox mode. No, because there is no purpose to building anything. Apart from to solve the puzzles in the shrine, at no point did I ever find that building anything was useful. I put mm. rockets on my shields all the time, because when you use the shield, you just blast off in the air, and then you get infinite... Well, not infinite, but you get loads of slow motion shots... Uh, in the sky, which is really, you know, you can knock everybody down before you come back down. That's a thing that I really enjoy doing. Um, but like, and you'd fuse whatever the strongest thing was to your sword, which I wish it just did automatically, to be honest. But like building like, oh, I'm going to build a car to go this fast. Like, was there wasn't ever really a point. Like, I didn't use my horse. I just ran everywhere and then activate a shrine and then you can fast travel there. And like, I don't need to build a car because the cars are, you know... Uh, it's just faff in it. It's just an extra bit of faff. Just it's a lot of faff. It's a lot of faff in that game. That's that's why I bounced off it immediately because it kind of opens up and it's like, hey, go to these four places, and I kind of just went, oh, everything feels kind of like a faff. Yeah, it's I just mean, everything's just I, a bit of a faff. All the four places are very similar, which definitely thinks. But there's stuff like so you build if you build a plane, right? You get the the wing glider, which is the gliding bit, and you're like, I'm gonna glide on this thing, right? You get 300 meters from where you started. And it breaks. It dissolves. Yes. No matter what battery life you've got left, the actual physical body of the thing will break if it travels more than 300 meters. Because otherwise you could just fly around the map and the developers didn't want that. Which is... And it, which, what's the, but when, I'm, no at the, when I'm at the end of the game, when I can just fucking fly around the map and zoom up into everything that I want to, none of that is actually... It's just really limiting. And I'm like, oh... Like, I was there going, oh, all these limitations are to stop me doing the thing and I'll remove them. But, like, none of those limitations got removed... And I'd love to just be able to, like, put a plane out and just fly around. Because it's really... The mechanics on it are beautiful. You can pilot it by just standing on different bits of it. You stand at the back, it pulls up. You stand at the front, it goes down. Left, right. On the left and the right wing. You know, mechanically, it's stunning. But these limitations just keep stopping the fun. The amount of time I'm building something, I'm like, oh my god, this is so fun. And then it just goes, starts flashing. And you're like, oh, okay. that's well, One break. of your big things that you really liked about Just Cause 4 was the fact it just kind of let you do whatever. Yeah. 
and even though like, it was a bit of a mess, that the freedom is is yeah. I mean, enjoyable. Just Cause Four limits it in its own shit ways, but like well, they're yeah. not really that limiting once you get to the end of the game because you can summon like six or seven different things in the cooldown times like nothing. You know, yeah, this is, weirdly, that was pretty much the, the exact thing in reverse for me. That's why I bounced off the modern just causes. I just got bored with them because I just sure. had a, so many, like, I just had so many options straight away from the start of the game that, like, it became a, I found it was a really boring chore to go round all the towns because, uh, you know, sure, I had all these toys, but, like, I had so many uh, superpowers available to me. It was just facile to go around and knock down all the statues Ooh, and up all the things. And I just got bored of it because I felt like, okay, it, it's 10 minutes in and the game's given me, like, more toys than I will ever need. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I agree that that's a different kind of playstyle, but this is a game that is going for that playstyle and then not committing to it. Mm. Like, it's like, you can build any, you can build these weird fucking mechs and stupid shits and things like that and i did a stream when i was just building stupid shit but the amount of times it would not work or it would just just fucking stop working after a while like i was trying to build a helicopter using the gliders because i was like if they're providing lift when they go forward if i put them on a rotating helicopter uh, on like a rotating thing then that will should give lift and maybe it'll lift the whole thing up but during testing they start flashing green and then they break because they've travelled 300 metres. And I go, oh, that's fucking yeah, it shit. Yeah, it, it gives you a lot of freedom and then you kind of bounce off. Yeah. Uh, the, the so why haven't you played it yet? Uh, as I say, I, I, I'm terrified because everyone I see on Twitter is building fucking mechas that could spawn other mechas that go and hunt the final boss down or something and i'm scared that i'm gonna make a wheelbarrow that falls over and looks stupid so i i'm, t I'm terrified of the game because i'm terrible at like games like besiege i'm really terrible at those building games uh but I, honestly hearing you discuss it to made me more interested in it like 100 well, i'm gonna get I'm to it really sooner curious now. to see what you think about it because I, mm. I feel like me and daniel had different sort of opinions of breath of the wild because it made like my favorite bit of breath of the wild was just i loved the shrines i just liked the puzzles <laughs> they just the main bit i like oh the shrines are way better way yeah, like, better the puzzles are so good i mean one of the things in breath of the wild that i again it's kind of they, they have these mechanics early on in breath of the wild there's a bit where they're trying to tutorialize you something quite specific, but when I first played it, I didn't even realize. Where it's, oh, you need to get over a gap. And the way you get over the gap is you just cut a tree down and you use the tree as a bridge. Yeah. Which, Which is you very never clever. do again in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Whereas in this, it is doing more of that. Like, you're doing a lot of physics interactions. I mean, there's that one that was going about on Twitter where it was like a dynamic rope bridge with a, like a, a with wheels. Yeah. And like all every game developer was retweeting that going, people think this is not that hard, but uh, every game designer is looking at this and screaming. Yeah. <laughs> because it is working flawlessly. And it's doing so many impressive puzzles and interesting bits. I mean, it also just feels a bit unfocused yeah. as well. It's, it's limitations it's, 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 in, in the. Like, I understand the limitation of if you put a steering wheel on something in that game, like the, mm. the, the steering control, everything just activates. Yeah. There's no button you can press. So if you've attached loads of springs to give a car a jump, the car, will, all the springs will activate, and then you just on springs, right? You yeah. can't then, you can't activate stuff. So that kind of limits things. Like the, the weapons will fire automatically. If you put like a, a homing lock on on the weapon, you can't then drive it. I noticed mm. that you couldn't drive something that had like the the turrets that aimed, mm. which I felt was just all right. It's, it's again, it's another limitation. Where I'm like, that's just you're just trying to. You've given me tools to make me an unkillable god, and you're limiting them in a really unfun way. Like, smaller, weaker tools, like making me build catapults and shit would have been more fun. Mm. Um, and actually having a reason to use them, because, like, again, apart from, like, the places where you have to use them, because that's the puzzle or the, like, the intended uh, navigation, just didn't use any of them ever mm. for anything. Because they weren't... Uh, by the end of the game, like, by the time I got to the end, I was like, this just isn't fun. And I finished the game, and it then gives you, like, a, a percentage of how much of the game you beat. And I beat about 20% of the game, side quest shrines and all that stuff about 20 percent i think it was it sort of averaged out to um and that was i was done i was well done i was like there's nothing new coming and i just want to get to the end of this and i just oh the, the dungeons are shit again actually that's a lie there's one really good dungeon the desert dungeon is really good and it feels like a proper zelda -y dungeon and it's kind of weird but i love its vibe and its design 
Um, the fire dungeon in that game is the worst dungeon in any Zelda game I've ever played, and I'm pretty Oof. sure I've played all of them. Oh, hang on. Have you played Phantom Hourglass? Yeah, I hated the No, I'm DS sorry. Game. Nothing is worse than the central Phantom dungeon of Phantom Hourglass. Yeah, no, this is. This is definitely worse than that. No. Because I in, do not accept it. Because in that, in that dungeon, you actually have to uh, do things, whereas in this fire dungeon... Uh, you don't have to do anything because it's about like rails and getting across these rails and working out a thing. But all of the dungeons very vertical in sort of like like crisscrossing paths. Um, but you can just parachute from one bit to the other. I walked through it. It, it took me about four minutes. Like I really was just like, oh, I got to go up there, climb, climb, or like, rocket boost, climb. You know, I'm just like, uh, it's kind of. I mean, yeah, I hated it. I really yeah. hated that dungeon. It really made me angry. You got to have the one specific suit on, and then you have a boss who was shit. It takes ten seconds to work out what to do, and then about forty minutes to beat it. But no, this is why really. I've not when I when Breath of the Wild came out because I played it on the Wii U because of course I did. Um, it was the one person who played it on the Wii U. <laughs> but I when that came out, a lot of it felt so new and interesting. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That I kind of kept going back, and I was really excited to explore that world and explore the mechanics. And I've struggled. I've, I, I, I'm not really picking it up because I kind of, when I was going into it, I'm like, well, it's the same game with all these kind of physics objects in, which is neat, but I'm not really. Yeah, it's really l very little change. Like the, the, the overworld changed so much, I wish they'd advertised more. Of course, there's the second world underground that is great and has a really fun mechanic and is genuinely the only bit I will go back is to fully finish exploring that. Um, and I like stuff like, you know, there, there's some chests that give you a map. And then you get that map, and that map's for the underground, and you go in the underground, and you've got to try and find that, and that'll give you, like, an old costume piece. And that's fun. That's fun. I really... That was my favourite bit of the game, was those getting those treasure chests. Um, and it's just an X on the map that you go to, uh, which means that it's actually worse treasure chesting than Chia, which is... Well, that, well, this is the thing. I feel like the older I get, the less I'm interested in these big games with loads of content. Where I played Cheer and I went, this is so fucking focused and it's like 10 hours and I had a great fucking time. And Zelda, I'm like, there's loads of things to do here, but it's a bit overwhelming and I can't be bothered. I mean, I must admit that you're talking to me and John who are basically playing Elden Ring nonstop. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love honestly, a bad game. No, I, oh, no, 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 no. Honestly, even though I keep going back to Elden Ring, 100%, I kind of, there is a part of me that looks at Elden Ring and thinks, is Elden Ring a little bit too big? <laughs> like... Do I do it like you know? By the time I get to Mountain Tops of the Giants, I basically yeah. feel like I'm done with a given character. That's as far as a character after my first has ever got. Like by the time I get to Mountain Top of the Giants, I can't be fucked with doing the Mountain Top of the Giants. Never mind uh, wrapping up the deep wood, the deep root depths. Never mind wrapping up all the shit in the the blood air around Malka. Never mind probably some other underground bits I've forgotten. Like at that point, I just rush to fire giant and get that game done and move on to a different character i feel like there's an element to which elden ring might for me be almost a tiny bit too large for replaying i must say that i think once you beat the fire giant the game kind of then escorts you to the end of the game well it depends whether you've done the other stuff like you know have you gone to like you know Mikola's hailing tree at that point or not or yeah i mean yeah the you rest could, of you the could, snow field you defer in that sort of way but it does kind of go here's a new location like this i'm 100 sure down. at what point of the game you're kind of supposed to go to the hailing tree to be perfectly Never. honest like <laughs> that it's bitch, one of those well, like, that bitch is like, horrifying. Which i kind of like in a way because like, i don't know when i'm supposed to go to caleb yeah. Like, I suppose technically you'd argue, well, you've got to go to Kayla to get half of the Dectus Medallion to get into Lindell, but actually, or the Altus Plateau, but also you, you don't, because yeah. you can just go up and beat the dragon, and you can just bypass it, like, and bypass. And I really like the fact you can bypass just about any, yeah. like, barrier. There's always an alternative way around to basically everything, I, even see, whether it's a warp or it's a, just a But that's the thing, find. is the thing that's in your way there is exploration. It's geography. Yeah. What's stopping you from progressing through the game there is because is the thing that's in the way. There's a big castle in my way. I'll yeah, either unless you find the path around it. Go around it or go through it. You know, there's there's yeah. there's I found that if you go and defeat the second version of the first boss and then go back uh, skip the first boss, go to the second version, uh kill that one. If you come back, the first one is gone. Yeah, you Which, do not need to fight Margit if you kill Margot first. That's yeah, true. That, and all those lovely little details and stuff. But that is a game that limits you via its exploration stuff. Whereas Zelda, you just kind of go anywhere at all. Because yeah. there's no, like, strong... Like, there's, like, different colours enemies that are a bit stronger. But there's no, like, 
really hard to kill enemies in the entire game. Though, again, Zelda has never been a game about that level of hardcore difficulty where bosses no, will I, kick aware. your ass for 10 hours until you finally manage to nail the but exact I, I micro you Breath need. Breath of the Wild was very difficult at the start. Yeah. I remember finding it to be a very difficult game because things would just kill you very quickly and you had to be very clever and stuff. And when you start getting stronger, you stop being clever in the in Breath of the Wild. And I think that's what kind of put me off of it. But I felt that very quickly in Tears of the Kingdom, I was like, I just kill anything anyway with all these fused weapons that I've got. You know, strangely, yeah, I Bethes- it really easy. Bethesda games do actually have a similar flow to them. Very famously, Power Creep comes into a Bethesda game where generally when you get towards two-thirds of the way through the game, you have become an unstoppable god. Yeah. This is literally... Like, and, gener- the- and very often, especially on the highest difficulties, and especially especially in survival mode in Fallout 4, the early game is the most interesting bit. So when you are yes. at your weakest and you actually have to be very strategic about the looting runs and you know where you're getting your food and water from and where you're getting your junk from and how you slowly build your character up and how you slowly expand your sphere of influence as you slowly start expanding outwards from the corner of the map you started. Uh, yeah, I- He's the most of interesting bit survival. of Fallout 4 survival mode. I played Fallout 4, why... but with one change, yeah. I turned saving back on because I was playing it on the Steam Deck. Uh, yeah, fair. And, oh, uh, just stability issues. Just stability issues, yeah. But the, my thing with survival mode, when I did my big modded play, one of the big things I modded that I actually very specifically modded is I changed all the health and damage because that, that, that second kind of two-thirds of the way through when it becomes really easy was kind of ruined it. So yeah. I, I just rebalanced it to make... Like stuff like Death Claws and My Luck Queen's just so comically hard that even on the higher difficulty, I had to run away. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, I even, and even the then, it doesn't matter because by that point, you probably have the tools to cripple their legs and cripple all of their limbs and basically, you know, neuter them the moment you well, see yeah, them, regardless, I, I had like a... of, regardless of health meter size. Well, yeah, I just had this ridiculous two shot fucking handmade rifle that just killed everything immediately. Yeah. Um, so well, I on just. That I... Note, Saints Row. The new mm. Saints Row just had its combat patch. You could sort of choose how much damage uh, people do to you and how much damage you do to them. And Stop trying much... to make Saints Row happen, damn. Saints Row's not going to happen. Good, it's a no, good it's game. It's dead. It's good Nobody game. liked it. I loved it's it. It's a good game. We um, liked it. It's not a good game, but I loved it. Uh, it's a fun game. But the, 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 new, the way I set everything up is basically I can one-shot kill anything, but anything can one-shot kill me. Mm. And that game has become fucking tense. Like you get if you go if you go up a stairs and there's two dudes there, you're probably just gonna die. So you actually have mm. to like play it very carefully. And I'm playing this really bizarre current playthrough of like really tense Saints Row. And I genuinely think it's the best fun I've had with the Saints Row. Oh, no, literally. The the way I one of the big things I did for Fallout 4 in survival mode is I made it so headshots are always an instant kill if you yeah. don't have helmet on. But that's true of me. So I would just walk into a room and I would die in one shot. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's more, fun. It's a more and, fun way than the bullet spongy bullshit. That yeah, was whereas in Zelda, I'm kind of going into combat and I'm just like, eh, there's not, well, it doesn't why feel... Why are you going into combat? That's the thing, I, right? I don't know. I, I, I was and then I went, I, if you and go I kind of do it. If you go and fight a thing, you'll get a chest. Yeah, you know, and the chest is I like, oh, there's a, a rusty sword. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, great. I've used three rusty swords getting this one. You know, if yeah. you go and fight the guys in the underground, you're getting the, the resource that lets you do the, the faster spawning. But I, yeah. um, you know, I'll just get out the fucking menu. And that's kind of... I don't know why we were bothering to do the combat. Yeah, Again, it, it, feels, it just feels a bit unfocused. There's not enough yeah. reward for the player. Not like in a reward like I need... I'm like, I need rewards. But like in a progression sense of rewards. I didn't really feel like apart Re- from like health and thingy, I was like progressing. And the health and the, the, the stamina upgrades you get from the shrines, the puzzle shrines, which are not combat. Yeah. I didn't find a single one of those fucking irritating combat shrines in there, which is lovely. Although the that last one nice. I did was a tutorial one, which I thought was very funny. That in some order, I cannot work out where they thought I would go when I was playing that game, but I didn't. Or I will say that taking the photos of the individual things in the game is back, and that's the best bit of that game. <laughs> that's the thing I, mean, I spent that's the most the best time bit doing. Of a lot of games. The, 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 the filling in that compendium by taking as nice a photo as possible of all of the things, that's what made me the happiest. Oh, Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap, basically. That's the best bit about Tears of King, because you've got this beautiful open world, and you go, oh, there's a plant I haven't taken a photo of yet. You kind of go, oh, what's the angle I'm going to do? Where's the thing? Okay, that's how I'm sold. I'm going to play this, uh, so I'm gonna play this later. This I week. mean, you have to go through some quests to unlock that shit in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that's what I was saying earlier, that it's geography that pushes you in Elden Ring, and I think in good games it's geography, but in this it's quests. Mm. Like, go to this place, do this thing, go to this place, do this thing. 
Yeah, but very clever visual and architectural world design is a real skill. Yeah. And for all of their occasional problems, I think it's one Bethesda have always been very good at. Yeah. That you walk into a world and uh, stuff you see on the skyline and the stuff you see nearby to you guide you in a sensible, curated way without ever blocking you from if you just want to say, fuck it, I'm going a different direction. But you get very, you know, organically nudged towards important stuff yeah. where you're going to find content. And that's well. why Tears of the Kingdom does that as well. Is it, It's it's the, the world. It's literally a case of, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? And that's the first half of, of, of a playthrough. But when mm. that dies off because you're like, oh, oh, it's another one of these. Oh, it's another one of these. It starts to get a bit of a Ubisoft feel. Mm. I think it starts to have the Ubisoft rut. But do you not think the same is true to an extent in Elden Ring, where there is no. a certain point in the game, no, no, hear me, throw, hear me out, two-thirds of the way through, where you have now got the spells and the weapon that you are super happy with, you've upgraded them to plus 10 or plus 25, depending on whether they're somber or normal, they're basically maxed out, you are now a god, and all you're going to do is get very incrementally stronger, because all of your remaining stat points are just going to go into whatever your primary stat that's scaling best with your weapons is, and ultimately, everything the game's going to give you at this point, armor, weapons, spells, incantations, whatever, you are functionally not going to be using them because you have now got your loadout. Like, the game run... The Elden Ring absolutely does, before you get to the end, run out of things to give you that are worth having. I disagree. That's a problem with not a lot of games, though, admittedly. I mean, that is most games, but I disagree with Elden Ring, and the reason I, I, I fell in love with Elden Ring so much is that right before the... I think it was the last dungeon or the last but one dungeon I did... It had a new gameplay mechanic in it. It had the lights on the ground and it had enemies you couldn't kill. Yeah. And I couldn't work out. I was like, wait, do I get them in the light? Is the light do that? And I had to work out a new gameplay mechanic. And I'm like, you know, two bosses away from the end. And I'm like, that's a mechanic, but that's not, it can't reward you with anything for solving it. But that, aside it, from it, just it, a handful it was, more rooms. It was, still, it was new. It was giving me something new. And you're right at that point, I was probably kitted out with what I would go on to, to beat the bosses with. But like it was like this game is still giving me surprises. It's still got mm. new shit in it. It still could yeah. go. I can still like go, I'm an unkillable god. Pang. Uh oh. <laughs> this is arguably uh -oh. my my, own, my only problem with Elden Ring, which is it's so aggressively in terms of mechanically rewards you, given it's an, almost entirely about combat. And absolutely right, there's some really fun things in, in, in dungeons, but ultimately it's about combat. Yeah. Like, if you can't beat the shit at the end of that dungeon that's got a big health bar and wants to kill you, then back to the beginning you go. Yeah. Ultimately, it, it boils down to it is about combat, and that's fine. But, like, as a result of that, yeah, like, the game really, really rewards you for doubling down and specialising. Like, if you spread your points too widely, you fall behind. If you decide that, like, you know, you're going to have a weapon that's dexterity and intelligence uh, aligned, and you just put all your points into them, you're going to do better. And it means you're, you're ending up in a situation where... You know, you are really incentivized to go nothing. Like, after a certain point where you've got the bare minimum you need an endurance, or, you know, the bare minimum you need in fact, just ignore arcane, fuck arcane. Bare minimum you need oh, to do stay alive. Oh, I'm doing an arcane run right now. <laughs> okay, if, assuming that you weren't doing an arcane run, though, like, because, say, discoverability is such an insignificant stat that you're only t touching, like, a tiny fraction of a percent with each point of arcane, there's no point in taking a little bit of arcane. You either want to take... 80 arcane or no arcane at all the game doesn't really like you spreading and it means spreading your stats and as a result of that you get to, you know there are certain weapons that are going to just inherently make, turn you into an absolute god slaying maniac because they have really good scaling versus those stats you've in, you've in, you, you know you've invested in and every other weapon is useless. Like, if you are not... And there are a lot of big strength swords in this game. And if you're just not investing in strength, <laughs> then that means, like, maybe a third of the weapons in this entire game just go in the bin. They are useless. There is nothing you can do aside from if you literally respect your character to use them with ah, your armor. But see, that's there the is thing. Is nothing made, to do with them. They made respecking easy in this game. It costs you yes. one little item that you get quite a lot of, and you just change everything. Just really neatly, cleanly change everything. And I mean, to beat fucking devil woman with a fucking long sword, uh, I had to respect twice. Yeah. Well, I was trying to... But, and I thought I was done to the end of the game at that point. I thought my, my blood claws and everything, I was like, yep, this is me done. I'm going to be fucking fantastic. I'm absolutely going to nail this. 
and then she came along and I was like, okay, I need a new strategy. Yeah, and then fun fact, Radagon's resistant to blood loss. Lol, fuck you. Yeah, great, great yeah. stuff, isn't it? Um, but that's the thing, is like you can come across one of those things and after getting battered, you can just go, actually, fuck it. Let's go completely change my character, level up these swords, you know, go because I've, I've found the, the somber smithing stone marbles by this point. I yeah. can now go and level all those weapons up and just buy the things because I've got so many fucking souls. And I can then have this brand new character like fucking that. You so know, I don't really go. enjoy that just because I like to feel like I am role playing as a character who has slowly and cautiously grown. Like I'm happy to use the respecking to slightly adjust my character in a way that lets me like, you know, gives me an extra you know, four points of strength and dexterity so I can use this particular weapon that's still in line with what I want. But I personally just, and this is just, you know, my choice as a player, I don't like saying, okay, my character who was a wuss who's got everything in intelligence, a little bit of faith, and like, you know, is is a dual mage. Actually, for the next 10 minutes, he's going to be Hercules <laughs> and just bonk the boss because that boss is vulnerable to bonking and then we'll go straight back to being a wuss. Like, to me, that just, I don't like doing it. I, 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 I do. It, it breaks my my like quiet internal role play and my sense of who this character is and what I've been growing them towards. It makes the whole the, everything I've done up to this point feel really inconsequential and dumb and pointless to me because I, I've, I've spent all this time like you know I've I've put her in robes because she's a mage even if it's not necessarily the best because fashion over utility whatever the fuck. <laughs> uh, I, 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 if I just turn her into Bonkules for one fight. And then turn her straight back. I don't like it. I can't do it. I can because I feel like it's my characters getting that desperation level of interacting with these darker magics to try and do this quest that they're mm. on. And that's Plus, I of... also don't like how the fact that if you want to try out a new spell, you can uh, because like you're still using the same upgraded staff. But if you want to try out a new sword, fuck you because if your existing <laughs> swords are plus seven and you're and you're starting and the new sword you want to try out is one you have no way of knowing whether it's going to be better when you get yeah. it to plus seven that i and, would like that's a yeah. that's a quality life change i would like to see i, I would like to be able to spend uh just show me what it was at level one. to refund my upgrade no stones. just show me what the sword was at level one that's all i need to do right yeah let me push a button this is what it stats that's for level fine. one and i'll you be know, like resident oh, evil 4 has got a really it. good system about that where when you're when you're buying uh, the remake i mean that just came out that's when you're looking, when you're looking to buy uh, a new gun from the merchant, you can compare what that gun will be like when it's been maxed out compared to your current gun when that gun's been maxed out. Hey. So you can compare how the two are going to be ultimately. Yeah, that's neat. I like that. So you can have, doing, so you yeah. actually make you can make it like you know because some weapons are slower but pa more powerful and some are going to be faster but less powerful and you think okay which do i actually want so you can actually compare like you know uh, compare like for like compare base stats compare max stats and you can just cycle through those when you're considering whether to buy a new gun or not it's a really cool feature it's, it's really lovely yeah. and it really bugs me that yes elden ring even though you can find the ball bearings for like smithing stones and buy them like some of them are right at the end of the game oh yeah like some of them are right at the end of the fucking game like yeah. you have to be well into mount top of the giants before you could do that and i wish you could just yeah spend and i'd be happy to spend a quite big pile of runes to refund my smithing stones so i can try them on something else or as you say literally just have a button i can push to say look show me what this weapon would look like if it was the same level as my currently equipped weapon yeah you pay a bunch i do of not know whether because this a... giant fucking sword of stuff for me i don't know how good it is you do a rune transfer that's what you want you want a, a, a rune transfer where you push your button... Uh, sorry, a, a stone transfer where you just... All yeah. the stones go blah, 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 on the other one, but it destroys the weapon that they were on originally. Oh, that's... No, you can't do that because the original... like Almost every weapon in this game is unique and you're going to get one of them. Yeah, that's what I want to do. That's what I like. Oh, definitely that's not because I like. I'd never do it. I'd never do that. Just let me <laughs> see what they look like side by side and let me see if I want to go grinding for the stones to, to get them. I just want to let me just see them side by side. That'd be fine. The stones does annoy me in Elden Ring, and I wish there was a way of comparing weapons like for like so I could figure out which one was actually good or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see how I long it took I me completely to zoned out because I don't give a fuck about Elden Ring. That's fine. I, that's fine. I zoned out most large parts where you're talking about Apple and, and Zelda games I've not played, so that's fine. But you should play it, John. I'm really curious to hear I'm what you think. I'm going to play it. it this week. I'm a YouTuber. You've got to get to it, you know? Shh. I'm a big video. Now. We don't do okay. that. We haven't even discussed the, the huge number of remakes yet. Oh, God, there's remakes? 
There's so many remakes. Two and a half hours in, John. Don't don't, don't sound like that. They're actually good this year. I know it's like been like a joke in the video game industry for like so many years. Like, oh, look at these lazy developers and publishers. They just remake and remaster games rather than coming up with new ideas. How lazy they are. But this year, they've all been good. Like, that's the weird thing. Like, this year, all all the original IP, like Redfall's been absolute trash straight in the bin. The remakes have been good this year. Yeah. Dead Space, good. Resident mm. Evil 4, good. System Shock, good. Advance Wars, good. Silent Hill 2, we'll see about that one. It's hopefully coming out later this year. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing the Karamari re-release. We love Karamari. Because I love Karamari. It's fucking yep. great. Runs beautifully on the old Steam Deck. 10 out of 10, good stuff. No, seriously, you should play the Resident Evil 4 remake, though. It's actually very good. It's, I, it's really I good. I played it right after I played Village, and I really just want to be in first person, and I spent the opening being like, I wish I was in first person, and then I stopped playing it. <laughs> yeah, I just really enjoy how right people. at the start of the game, it, it's very, it stays very close to the structure of the original, and then it di- you know it diverges a bit more as time goes on once you've got used to what's going on. Mm. But I did also enjoy the dumb basement right at the start, just to fuck with you a bit. Oh, I didn't like it. In the demo, I gave up. Like, that's where I was like, no, I'm not playing this. What, 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 the only Shut thing I really up. hate about Resident Evil 4 is, is the descriptions for the difficulty. Where the game says to you, very specifically, when you're choosing difficulty to start of the game, if you've played the original Resident Evil 4, you should be playing on a hardcore mode, because you know what's coming up. Yeah. And then literally the first enemy in the game is an enemy type and that doesn't play by any of the rules of the existing Resident Evil 4 and isn't in the original Resident Evil 4. Mm. Yeah. As I had, fuck you, game, I'm playing on normal. Because literally <laughs> the first enemy, it's heads like, it's it's one of the, uh, I don't know even know what they're called, the ones where the heads like cracked and come off a bit. Yeah, I remember, I played the demo. I did not yeah. like the demo, it was spooky. And the original, like, you know, you shoot the, the first enemy who comes at you, you shoot him in the head, he staggers, you give him the kick, that's it, that's enough to kill him. And this new guy, if you shoot him in the head, well, the headshots don't work, because his head's, like, come off, so you can't go into the stagger, so he attacks you and bites you. I was like, but you told me to play the high difficulty, because I knew what I was going into. You can't tell me to do that, and then punish me for using my knowledge of the original, you fucker. <laughs> I was very annoyed at that, so I just played on normal, and I was happy to do so. Oh, that's completely fair, fuck it. Because the game deliberately does fuck with you. With uh, I particularly enjoy how the, the they've replaced the banging of Lewis in the cupboard with just a zombie doing some carpentry. Just to fuck with you. <laughs> I like that it's, it's brilliant. Fucking, you know, it's, it's, I like a game playing with your expectations a little bit. Yeah. Know? And I, so. I just love it. Well, just I can't, you know, sometimes you'll just be in error. Yes, yeah, this I know precisely what I'm going into. They'll be like, by the way, now you could like that the the lake. You could just like you know, it's now a huge area. You could fully explore on your boat. And we've just created a brand new play space that wasn't in the original. I was like, yes, love it. <laughs> I mean, now back in you know, here's a completely new area that wasn't in the original at all. Now we've just changed the plot would entirely. You say, now back to an area that's exactly like the original, except for one twist. Because fuck you. Oh, do you think great. it's worth playing the original still, John? I think the original holds up really nicely. I, I still really if, enjoy if, the original. But, but, if but you equally, had the I really enjoy the original because I know it so well. It's like it's like you know, it's like. But a if you're telling someone who, if you'd never played either game, neither the yes. remake or the original, would you just tell like? Would you always recommend the remake over it, or would you say yes. play both, or would you? Okay. I I, I think that's difficult. Does it depends. It okay, no, 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 no. It depends who I'm speaking to. You. It depends who I'm speaking to. <laughs> If the person I'm speaking to is of a generation where they know and are fond of those, you know, very, very early proto third person shooters that were relatively Mm. slow paced when we were still learning about that genre around the early 2010s, then Mm. I'd say go back and play the original first because it still holds up pretty well. If we're dealing with someone who, you know, is maybe a younger person into gaming and hadn't played and wasn't around in that era, they might find the original a little bit clunky. <laughs> because they bit. don't have the expectations and knowledge of how to play those games. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's fair. No, that's that's why I went into. It. I, 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 think it really dep- I think it really depends who I'm speaking to. Seven like, was the I, first Resi game I'd ever played, and I played seven and eight, and I adored them. I, I would just four. go. Stri- I would go straight into the remake. Well, that's what I. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Admi- as, I think as, it's. I'm- I think it's. It's fairly smooth. Like, I think it's a really good balance because, like in the original, you ran around basically with like dumb tank controls, and if you wanted to fire your gun, you had to hold still. Like going into mm. aim mode, uh, froze. And in yeah. the new one, you can still move. It's just a bit slower. So they're kind of staying true to like some of how the movement works in the original, while still making it a bit smoother for the modern audience I, I will as well. say, so I played the demo of it, which is up to the end of the village best bit, obviously. It's the only bit I really wanted to play. Um, yeah. So I'm glad it was a demo. 
Uh, but the knife weapon degradation, I was like, fuck this. I relied on that fucking thing. That thing kept me happy and safe when I first played through it all. I don't like the knife breaking down. Ah, uh, you know, I, 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 I felt that way at first, but once I got into, I kind of started understanding what the game was wanting me to do with the knife and how, like, you know, basically, you spend the knife as a get out of jail free card to avoid damage or to take out an enemy silently or mm. as a way of, like, you know, just parrying attacks or, like, especially as get out of jail free cards with the bosses. Because mm. as long as you've got the knife, you can base, or you can do like huge amounts of damage to the boss if you've got your knife available to you. Mm. Like I like once you kind of understood it as like a currency that you spend. It's like basically like Leon is just a guy, but the knife is the real superhero. It's like you know the inanimate carbon rod being mm. carried through, being carried on the Simpsons as everyone's sharing. And basically, Leon's knife is the real hero of that game. And once you understand that, basically, yes, you've got like you know a certain amount of knife health, and basically where wherever you commit it, you win. It become uh, to me it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, but then and I can't. I, spam I, I the came knife to be happy with the knife system. People come at me. I don't like horror games. Mm. Like oh, horror are games. we? Th- how are you feeling about the Metal Gear Solid Three remake? Yeah, I never played the original, so that I do not ah, know. Ah, you don't know anything about it. the original because they're really releasing the, the those on the old console in good time, boys. Uh, I'm gonna. Find, I, I want, there's a lot of games I want to read. Like I've never gotten a chance to play, and I'm quite excited to. That is gonna be that that because in August there, there it's Metal Gear Solid Volume One or something of the re-release. Wait, is is it already on PC? Can uh, which, yeah, which games, you, well not three, three is not. This will be three's first. I think it's coming to PC. I hope it's coming to PC. But this is Wait, like is it called Metal Gear Solid Delta? That's the remake that's coming out. Before the remake, Why is they it are called reached, Capital Delta? Because they don't Why? want to release a game uh, with the title three in it. That where well, people are like, well, I didn't play the first two. Okay, but 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 okay, but but yeah, no. Delta's I get it. the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It, it should yeah, be Metal Gear Solid it, Gamma. Clearly. It's fine. Look, <laughs> no, it's not fine. <laughs> it is not fine to replace a three with the fourth letter of the look, alphabet. Yeah, we, okay. look, we you fucking hacks. <laughs> But anyway, like my my thing about that game is no, like, so no, I'm not moving on from this. We are moving on from this because I don't care about that version because they are. We need to wrap this up soon because I got shit to they do. They literally only did it because no one knows what a capital gamma looks like, didn't they? Is that yeah. why they did it? They skipped gamma because no one knows. So if they did that, everyone would be like, "What the fuck's that symbol? Why is there a weird thing?" You're just having to Google it right now, I'm, aren't no, you? No, I'm googling when's the Metal Gear Solid uh, Master Collection coming out. Jesus Christ! Oh God, that's why they did it. They genuinely called it Delta, not Gamma, because it was the symbol people people know a triangles into. Oh God. That's made my day so much worse. Yeah, it's fine. That's look, actually you, ruined my day. Uh, look, could, could, could you, can, Konami oh. doing something stupid isn't exactly a new right, thing, no. John. Oh. Shut up. It doesn't matter. Because, because, yeah, because, 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 because. They're releasing Metal Gear Solid Master Collection in August, I think they were saying, which is Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3, the originals, and it's coming to, like, PlayStation and everything. In fact, it's also got... When they say Metal Gear Solid 1, does that mean the Twin Snakes remake of the originals? Or, like, the original originals? It'll probably be the original one with the VR and special missions. Mm. Okay. Because they've already remade the original one before. They called it Twin Snakes. It was shit. It was okay. No, it wasn't. It was shit. I like Metal Gear Solid 1, but 2 and and 3 are, like, I think, two of the best games ever made. Because uh, you can buy two on good old games right now and then install the mod that makes it work perfectly. But three's never really been out of the place. So replaying three, I think it was last release on like the PS3 and having like a modern version of it would be really fucking nice. Because then I don't care what they do with this remake, right? If they're remaking it and they're going to change the camera because it had a, a third person camera in Metal Gear Solid 3 um, like the follow you around in like the expansion because they always used to release an expansion pack. Like mm. Metal Gear Solid 2 had uh, Metal Gear Solid Substance and there was Metal Gear Solid Subsistence for three, which adds mm. like new modes and soon this like two added a fucking skateboarding mini game, uh, and three added like this over the shoulder camera, which has become the series staple. But it, the game didn't honestly work as that because it was designed for the 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 fixed static camera. Yeah. If the remake doesn't have the fixed static camera, it's honestly I'm just not going to bother with it. Um, but having the original come back out, that's literally I want all remakes to do this. I want all mm. remakes to go. We're also re-releasing the originals. So whichever one you want, there you fucking go. It's also, I've just realised, got um, uh, Metal Gear 1 and 2 on it. Uh, which was the original uh, SNES games, I want to say SNES. Let's start the series off. I think the very first was the NES, actually. Yeah, maybe. I think it might have been a generation before that. It's been, it's a, it's a been going for a while. 
Uh, but mm. they're, they're also calling it the uh, Master Collection Volume 1. I'm hoping that means we're going to get a Collection 2 that isn't Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5, but ha- is the PSP ones? Like, I, I want to play... Um, fuck, what the one was called, but I want, I want to play Acid again. Metal Gear Acid was fucking champion. That was great. No one remembers Metal Gear Acid. I do. Mark, you remember you just make that ups? up. No, there was a card game Metal Gear Solid da- called Metal Gear Acid. Daniel has an encyclopedic gaming knowledge for some reason. You want a card game back. A Metal Gear, yes. Who doesn't love car games? Metal. I don't. Gear. I'm pretty sure it's just Metal Gear Acid. Also, we really need to wrap this up now because I got shit I need to do before 5 p.m. Well, we can just keep talking for a little bit longer. Yeah, Metal Gear Acid <laughs> was like a card game based one. We had to do. It looked great. It was a PSP game. Ah. Oh. Look, okay, while we're talking about remakes as well, I just want to point out the most ambitious, like impressive one that just came out is System Shock, the original. Mm. Which yes. is 1994's. Mm. 1994 just came out. Like, level geometry, same. Enemy placement, the same. Mostly core cool mechanics, either the same or mm. kind of retroactively added in from System Shock 2. So, functionally, this is basically very similar to the same game that came out in 1994, and it still plays really well. Christ, mm. that was a game that was ahead of its time. Scared the shit out of me, Showdown. Because it's still, it's still so good. Absolutely. It is shut me up wild how well it plays, uh, like, 20 years later. Yeah. Mm. And they did not need to change that much. Like, it's still basically the same game, just with a fresh coat of paint and whatnot. And it's still really good. It's it was incredible. a ho- horrifying game. Genuinely yeah. horrifying. I'm excited to play. Really, really I, 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 I pre-ordered that ages ago. I'm actually, I'm, there's lots of games I'm excited to get to. I just haven't bothered. I want to play well, yeah. loads of that rail one. I saw you played actually months ago. I saw someone else do a thingy on I was like, I want to see if John's played this already. And Railway had, Empire 2. No. Uh, what's another one? Rail something. Uh, railway games. Rail, you have to be more specific. One word, rail G. Rail guard. Rail grade? Rail grade, that's yeah. the Rail grade, yeah, is is very much basically like a little train set because it's not like yeah. a huge swap area. It's more like a puzzle game, really. Yeah, that is what yeah. interested me. Because it's it. like it's a small train set area and it says basically find a way to create a very efficient, optimal rail system that just moves goods around in a sensible fashion around this very finite train set, like mm. train set table thing. Yeah, I'm into that shit. Right. Yeah, I am into that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get your codes for it. It's it's hard to get them now. No one likes us. No one likes us, but that's okay because that's we. Okay. No, like Rogue Grade's really good. Rogue Grade was was really really interesting. Like you know, in, in a way, like I'll always be drawn to the bigger rail games where it's like here's a ridiculously dumb map now set up a continent spanning rail network. Mm. But like Rail Grade for what it was was really was really good. I want to play. It. I want to play all the railway games. I like railways. That's my well, age thing. I got old and like well, railways, mm. conveyor belts. Fucking help me with things that take things. I mean, to when other you places. think about it, a train is basically just a, ver- a railway, is just a very large conveyor belt. Oh, basically, that's the good yeah. shit right there. Say that again, John. Yeah. What What is that instead of like building railways everywhere? We just built conveyor belts instead. It's basically the same thing, but then you wouldn't need a train. I do love the. Oh, that's just a fucking Elon Musk thing. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Shut up, John. Like, if we just... No, no, think What's about it. Like, right Musk? now, we've, got, we've got these rails okay, everywhere. We have to, mm-hmm. like, you know, flatten the ground and make it suitable for trains. And then even after you've laid the tracks, you still need fucking trains. And you can only use them when you've actually... When there's a train going. If there's no, there's no train till tomorrow morning, it's like, well, fuck you, I suppose. But if we just built conveyor belts everywhere, you could just hop on the conveyor belt anytime, 24-7, because we have to keep them running, and you could just go. Yeah, well, yeah. Pro- holy pro- shit. Probably not the several hundred miles an hour that you'd want a train to go at, like a bullet no. train. Bullet train okay, conveyor yeah. belts. I, 300 okay, miles an hour yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, fine. The journey's going to take a tiny bit longer, but for the convenience of being able to literally hop on or hop off whenever you want. Yeah. Come on, that's worth it. That's I mean, a good trade off. Mm, anyway, no, we need to wrap this up because I really need to go and do shit. We don't. Oh, yeah. Let's keep talking. I'm having a good time. I need to get all the fucking mailers. John, let's have let's have another. Let's keep chatting, John. Me, you. And no, Matt. I need to go oh, too. Oh, I've not done lunch yet today. I need to get fucking Wars. nailers. That's the a place good remake. It's five. literally just, it's not even a remake. They just re-released it. Fuck it, it's good. Get Advance Wars. Advance Wars, yeah. One, two, recamp, whatever it's called. It's fucking great. Honestly, I'm surprised they did one and two rather than two and dual strike because like one and two are very similar. And two's just better. I, th- so I, don't know you, they didn't I just suppose do... you could just go from one to the other, really. They didn't kind of glue them together. But like, then you have this weird system where you've got to do two tutorials for the same mechanics <laughs> in a row. Yeah. It's really weird. Like, I don't know. I feel like two and dual strike would have made more sense to me. But then you've got to make it work on a DS thing. And uh, yeah, and then you've got to figure yeah. out how to do all the dual, the dual e-jibbles. Yeah. Right, we should wrap up I'm because wrap Matt's up. Got, got, you know, 
places places to be, things to do. Ugh. I think we're all the mailers. More the I have to go get a thousand out. mailers. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We believe you. Oh god, I just remembered about the fucking Delta thing again. That's going to ruin my whole day. Get me a code for that... games, Matt. I'll get them. <laughs> That's all I want, Matt. To do these now. Give me games. I always try. I do games. most other things. And fuck one it. of those I... Apple headsets. Games. Oh, and next, next time on the podcast, I can say my thoughts on Zelda, and you can yell at me because I'm probably going to enjoy it because I enjoy yeah, most and things. So inevitably, I'm happy we'll be wrong I'm, with our predictions. Because I actually enjoy things. I, I'm a happy person who likes things. I think we might John be furious do one a little me. bit more recent because I think John's going to pester us when all the Starfield stuff comes out. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Starfield. Anyway, um, that's, that's it then. I guess, uh, Matt, final words? Fuck it. <laughs> that is great final <laughs> words. Normally from somebody wearing a parachute on top of a building, unaware yeah. that a parachute on a 10-story drop is not going to be the most efficient fucking thing in the world.